RJ Smangit. And uh, I'll be running Parasite Eve. New game for you, or any percent. I've got three commentators here with me. I've got the goat, Palmer. No, no, no. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't let them fool you. I've got another goat, Bomb Bomb. No, 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 no. no. And then no. another goat, Amart. Bad. Yeah. <laughs> three kings. <laughs> um, anyway, so oh, going back to the cutscene. We'll just get this started because the game has a couple little cutscenes right off the bat. Um, I will give you a three, two, one, go when we're ready. Are you ready? Three, two, one, and go. It's Mangan time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, buddy. So, you know, as all good runs uh, begin, they start with a cutscene. This one, we get a nice little look at the Statue of Liberty. Kind of looks like it's crying. I don't think that's foreshadowing at all, but... I think it just needs a little a little cleaning. That's just what it looked like in the 90s. Yeah, yeah that's definitely what it looked like. Yeah, <laughs> that's true. That's 90s eye goop. Yeah. <laughs> Not the worst kind. Man. <laughs> uh. But, you know, we get a little scenic New York scenery here. It kind of sets the tone. It's uh, Merry Christmas 1997. Best Christmas game. Oh, yeah. that's, oh man. Starting it early. Yeah, this is this is Christmas Starting in July. Starting late early. I almost brought my Santa beard. I love it. Yeah, I agree. It's a Christmas game. I be, I'm a believer. I mean, it's literally, you know, it's, it's right on it, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. We find ourselves at the opera. I is here with a, with a date. Does the date have a name? I was actually hoping you wouldn't ask me that. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a more poor reflection on me than you, to be honest. Well, I mean, I just, I, if, if all goes well, we just never see what he has to say, you know? <laughs> he just mashes it so fast, it never comes up. <laughs> I think his name is Man, if I remember correctly. <laughs> I swear, I think that's what his name is. Uh, we do need the final no, uh, name incentive. Is it still Catalina? Let me just give that a quick refresh, and yep, looks like you're right, still Catalina. All right, let's go. The Vani magic, it worked out. I think it's a C. No, no, no. No, I saw it. It's, oh, it's never okay. Wrong. Yep. Uh, we're doing it all caps so we know oh, wow. <laughs> that it's serious. Ah, oh, perfect fit. There we go. Catalina Brea, your, your hero for the evening. Wow. So we cannot wait to get into this play, so we're just going to run straight in there, leaving our date behind, although he's somehow in front of us again. <laughs> Move uh, quick. Before we do that, though, we're going to, you know, take out our club. Yeah, put your gun away. Before <laughs> yeah, put your gun away when you're going to the opera, pull yeah. the club out, just in case. And we get another cutscene, but well, this yeah. one's at least, you know, a little more exciting. Check my email. Some would even say that it's <laughs> fire. Fire. <laughs> <laughs> I think I've seen enough. <laughs> You know, it's actually funny that um, you can figure out how much, how much of time of your life you've spent watching this cutscene if you just like do your run amount by like three minutes. You know? Yeah. And because you always watch it, no matter how many times you reset, you almost never don't reset before this, right? Or you right. never reset before here. Oh yeah, right. So, a fun little thing, just to, you know, if you're ever curious, <laughs> you look at your run count and then you do the math by minutes, and you're like, wow. That's a, that's something. That's depressing. Yeah, that's something. <laughs> that's a statistic. Yeah, I just I'm not gonna do that, but yeah, it is yeah, interesting. No. Hey, you know, you're gonna go home and you're gonna look and you're gonna be like, wow, <laughs> I wish I wouldn't have done that. Well, that was a great <laughs> last run of Parasite. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I've been watching the opera for four days of my life. <laughs> Incredible. We got this fun play. This very eccentric actor. You should have acted it out. I should have. Oh. I could have worn this. I have this exact outfit at home. Which one? I was going to say. All of them. <laughs> oh. Oh. Dude, we, we actually could have done the whole squad. I know. Yeah. We, have, uh, <laughs> we should have coordinated. That's, that's on us. Next time, guys. Next time, yeah. Yeah, you'll have to bring it back. Yeah. We'll do full ensemble. Yeah. Or maybe by that time they'll have remastered the game, right? <laughs> um, sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. We got the nice musical solo. Beautiful voice.
She's a ventriloquist. Keep singing, not even moving her mouth. You know, somebody told me there was a translation issue once, and I was like, there's no words. <laughs> 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 what do you mean? <laughs> Translating from what? So she locks eyes with Aya, and all of a sudden, everyone and everything is on fire. That's not, that's not Aya. That's Girl Cloud. <laughs> Girl Cloud. <laughs> Girl Cloud. <laughs> it really is, man. What a way to start a video game. It's memorable, if nothing else. Yeah. Yeah, you know, that's actually a good way to describe the game as a whole. <laughs> <laughs> There are some scenes in here where I'm like, wow, oh, especially for the time, man, that's that's something. There's a lot of, uh, I don't like the animals getting hurt in this game. Oh, that's what I was about to say. Like some of, some of those scenes are, are, are wild. Mm -hmm. There's our date. For some reason, he's the only one who survived other than Aya. Proximity buff, I guess. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> she has an aura. Yeah, the person on the left side of her was not, not not so lucky, I guess. Yeah. I assumed it was the blonde hair. Oh, yeah. The connection. <laughs> yeah, John, I can speak on that. <laughs> Palmer was there, too. <laughs> this is, at the blonde people meeting, we talk about this. <laughs> All right, so here we have our first actual thing to do. Uh, we're going to fight Eve for the first of a handful of times, and we're just gonna punch her with the club a couple of times. So we're looking for those tens to come up. If we get four tens, that'll end the fight in four turns. Other than that, we're just looking for at least two criticals, which are two tens for a five turn fight, and then one or less, um, it'll be a six turn fight. So it looks like we're getting that five. There you go, pretty pretty low key. Fist fight on the stage to start the game off. Yeah, and depending on uh, where the ATB is there, um, you can sometimes get a five hit fight uh, and still have like this, that laser beam that she was about to fire, the, the animation of it come out. And even though you finished the fight, you're still waiting like an extra second and a half for that animation to finish. We were very close to that. Yeah, she, was, she was that's priming. Exactly, uh, that's what I was thinking. There's a lot of instances like that where you can kill something and then still get hit by its mm -hmm. fading green hitbox or just yeah. the last move it was and, doing. And lose. <laughs> yeah, and, and lose. die. Yeah, and lose. <laughs> but that's not happening tonight. Yeah, oh, no, no. That would never happen. No, it's free sailing from here. It can't, nothing can go wrong. Yeah, fun fact. He hardest actually, boss. Yeah, he actually, <laughs> yeah, he, you didn't even see the skips he did because, you know, it's, it's from this on, it works actually chilling, so. The game uh, is a very chill game, in fact. So right out the gate, we got an entire theater of people on fire. We have a floating lady who shoots lasers and now a ghost child. Mm -hmm. I'm scared. This is a spooky game. And if you go into that door, there's a clown on fire. <laughs> well, you have to talk to him first and then he Yeah, 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 something like yeah. that. Yeah, yeah, it's been a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Just another average day. Yeah, yeah, in New York, man. What are, yeah, you, yeah. What are you gonna do? <laughs> Here we go, we got another good uh, FX cutscene. I really, it, all jokes aside, the cutscenes are actually still super nice. This hold up incredibly well. Yeah, the fact that they're still off-putting is like, wow, yeah. it still looks good, you know what I mean? There's something about like the, the PS1 era graphics that like just do a good job of making things look creepier than yeah. a lot of modern graphics do. Yeah, it lends itself to this art style a little bit somehow. Typical New York uh, rat here. <laughs> <laughs> He's doing this, the one that took the slice of pizza. <laughs> oh no, we better hide the pizza back in the front. <laughs> yeah, no, no. <laughs> oh wow, agreeable. I know, no attack there, yeah. that was pretty nice. So you'll notice we'll keep using this club almost all the way through the day until we get to the la the boss of the day. What's the boss of the day? Uh, I think it's Croc from the uh, critically acclaimed PS1 game, Croc. Not Croc 2? No, it's just Croc 1. When was Croc released? Um, I, I gotta, it's got to be like 95. Uh, yeah, I think it was 97, actually. It's, yeah, it's got to be earlier than this.
So this is a fun fact. Um, this is one of the very few instances in the game where tech speed isn't capped. Uh, so you can actually mash this pretty darn quick. And, um, you know, it's just always something that's been interesting to me. Uh, there's typically the game's uh, mashing speed is capped at about a, about a quarter input a second. So, um, or I'm sorry, about four inputs per second rather. So um, it's, you know, basically it's, it runs at like a 0.25 interval. And uh, in a few instances of, of the game, there, that just isn't there. Uh, the book is one of them, and Clamp, which we'll see later, is obviously. Um, and usually it's the ones that are really long and, and just not super enjoyable on the wrist. Yeah, so you're just going at it. Yeah. Here we go. Uh, we've... He's really bad at piano. <laughs> I know. That's, that's not how you play that at all. Yeah, and that's so expensive. It's like, <laughs> it's like 10 grand worth of damage she just did right there. So, you know, Melissa, we don't know who this is yet, technically, right? Uh, well, yeah, you do, because of... Oh, the, yeah, it's calling her Eve, sorry. Because of the uh, book or whatever. Oh, uh, yeah, you're right. You're right. Yeah, that, that, uh, there's a few kind of, like, Resident Evil-ish references in this game, and that journal is kind of similar to, like, the Itchy Tasty journal in Resident Evil, if you're familiar. Kind of, like, does serves the same purpose. But right now we're kind of like hitting her in two phases. She kind of does like a we'll move and then she'll move again and then do an attack. We're kind of just staying away from her so we can get this laser attack. Very easy to dodge. Nice. Really good fight. Uh, very easy to dodge the green lasers. But if you're a very, uh, close enough to her, she'll actually try to melee you. And that melee attack is super scary because you can get crit and basically die in one shot if you get like the random double hit that can happen sometimes in this game yeah you'll take like contact damage and a 28 crit and it's like whoa Ooh. it's like the i guess i wasn't over. playing today <laughs> yeah, the <game's> over. <laughs> i got 45 health that's incredible so it best best just to leave her be and let her do her lasers yeah especially in this setting you uh she can get on top of you pretty ugly and sometimes, like, the pathing of how she moves um, follows you, and you're like, get away from me. <laughs> yeah, so that one, that was actually pretty good just all around. Yeah, she did, like, I thought the pathing was stellar there, yeah. Short little bursty movements, but didn't... Because sometimes she could do, like, a twitchy middle movement that's not really anything. Yeah, she starts juking, she runs to one side, and she's <laughs> like, oh, nope, I'm going back to the other side. I'm like, come on, man. And you miss. Oh, that's the worst. I know, the miss feels so bad. It's so that. bad. Uh, okay, I'm glad that still hit. The battle theme in this game is really good. The music is just stellar overall. My one complaint about this game is that sometimes I feel like they could have put like just more ambient noise or something. Because when they Why? when they do ambient noise, it's really good. The sound design is fantastic for this game. This is actually a Frogger reference. Yeah. Oh, that's a bummer. We're gonna heal. Yeah, that guy's not very agreeable sometimes. I think I just got a little bit of a hitbox, hitbox. issue there. Yeah. yeah, that is one thing about this game that is um, something you just as a speedrunner will pick up on through repetition, but um, w the way that things look is not always how they appear in this uh, in this beautiful title. Uh, that frog is a good example. That frog's hitbox uh, exists much, much further to the right side of the frog as opposed to the left, which is why RJ dodged it to the left. But if you are close enough to it, the hitbox that comes out of the frog's mouth immediately is, is, you know, before it starts to taper. So if you're close enough to it, you can just get hit with that initial box anyways, which is uh, wider than, than the frog itself. Uh, it is, it's, it's a pretty, you know, interesting thing to have to learn. Ooh, an offense plus two. I didn't know this room existed until I, I ran this game. <laughs> Yeah, there's a couple of rooms and things like that that we do now. Oh man, there are some rooms in the museum just that uh, Hello? when I'd be doing like more casual runs or something, and I'd be like, well, there's so many rooms in this game yeah. I've never seen before. This is this is wild. All right, let's see if I could do this skip. I need to kind of listen to her footsteps and not run into that wall. There we go. So there is the one and only skip of the entire run. We. Managed to walk past a trigger for a fight. Jazz alert. <laughs> jazz alert indeed. Super <laughs> exciting jazz alert. <laughs> Catalina. It's Vani's, it's Vani's pup. It's special. Yeah, I mean, she's uh, 
just it, it feels like it's yelling at me, you know, because it's all in caps. Mm. That's what I wanted. It. I wanted us Catalina. to feel. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the excitement. All right, so maybe if you were paying attention, I did a menu after kind of running through those few rooms, picking up a chest. Uh, we are now using a gun, but it's not the one we started with. We picked up one after the two rat and frog fight where I got uh, hit by the tongue. And uh, we put the offenses that we picked up and um, into that gun, and we'll use that for this fight with Croc. Yeah, and the gun will shoot three times in its just way better than the first gun. Mm -hmm. um, and the first gun, just in case anybody's curious, uh, is it does about the same damage as the club, but because it attacks slower, you know, there's the speedrunners feel like we can get a little bit more out of, you know, just uh, the, the riskier style, but faster of the club. Uh, and this is the first gun that's really like an upgrade, honestly. And, uh, and obviously RJ put this offenses on it, makes it a little stronger. So if everything goes according to plan, this fight will be pretty easy. We just need to hopefully get, like, decent movement. Oh, I thought he was going to hit me with I his did tail. Too. I did, too. Yeah. So we should be good now, as long as he doesn't keep walking forward. Oh, what? Oh, that was so unlucky. That's OK. We'll fix it. Oh, what? <laughs> what, twos uh -oh. again? Uh -oh. Oh. We'll just heal. <laughs> what is this hit? See, we were back to the the hip fun hitbox conversation. Now, now I don't know what's going on. Whoa! <laughs> Calculated. Sick, sick dodge, baby. All planned. Actually, that ended up working out because yeah, you still you're shot three on times. The what? He's not dead? Whoa, whoa! Yo, I was over here celebrating. Yeah, what the heck happened? Oh, there? it's actually off rotation now. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. That was something else. That was how the fight goes every time, guys. Don't let us. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just adding woes and yeah. what's for dramatic it, effect. It's late. We figured we'd make it a little more exciting. Okay, good. We like this this fire attack. Hopefully, we didn't get any crits. Liter okay, I was like, none. Is he going to do it? Nope. Yeah, he's coming. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> this is an adventure. We'll pretend that I, I was never going to die there. I could actually still die. It's just an RNG minute. Oh my god, why? This is something else. When I tell you that this is the worst gator that has ever happened to me, I mean it. It will die on this turn. There we go. We did it. <laughs> We, we did the Ooh. we did the very simple first day <laughs> boss without dying. Just how we... they drew it up. Yeah, that's actually the strat, how it goes right there. Uh, although the part where you panic to the left, I could have panicked <laughs> to the right a little bit there. Right there. <laughs> <laughs> no, RJ did an incredible job. That is a that is a tough fight just because it does have so much variance. Um, and the typical strategy is that you will like run to a certain spot, and you count like to. I think Primus used to say three seconds, and we were like, what is that? Maybe th three Canadian seconds. But it's like, <laughs> Risa, shout out to him. He's a, an awesome legend. And um, we all used to discuss, like, man, how long is it? Like, what do you do? Because just if, you, if you're slightly off timing, he'll either come forward or if you're too close. And uh, you can do that fight 100 times in a day and have it go 50 different ways. You know what I mean? Even though there is a, a, a method, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, we were off to such a good start, and then I got that random, its tail was too far away on the mm -hmm. one shot, and it threw everything off. Yeah, sometimes that happens when he's in the midst of, like, swinging it at you, and it just happens to pull it away, unfortunately. I, I don't know. I thought you were fine on that one. I can't yeah. believe that even happened. Very strange. But, you know, we're through. We're through. No big deal. No worse for wear, as they say. And as a reward for that fight, we get a piece of armor that will... Um, used for all of day two. We get kind of like a um, reflection moment here from Aya. This is Aya talking about how the next six days, so the remaining five days, were a thing of nightmares for her. See, it was pure terror, but... It's crazy uh, uh, in the sense of, like, I, I look at this and I'm like, wow, the art style and everything is, is so fantastic and... You know, I, I feel like that pixel, like the, you could redo like the pixel remasters and stuff, you know, you could yeah. even redo 
you know, the, this kind of artwork. Oh man, it's just something about the, that era of 90s sprites to me is just it's so stellar and it looks so good. I think that um, uh, story-wise, we are, uh, what we, Square Enix loves to do this thing where they put you through the tutorial after they make you do stuff. Yeah. Yeah, and, uh, <laughs> so that was kind of like the do that. And, and now things get explained to you, which I always thought was an interesting design choice. Um, but story-wise, you know, as RJ alluded to, she was on a date with this person at the opera and it went poorly. Uh, well, well, I don't know. Maybe the dude had a great time. I'm not, it doesn't really specify. <laughs> yeah, we never really know. You never, you never you made it out. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he does make it out, and Daniel laughs at Aya because they find him like running down the street. And I'm like, that guy lived. I don't know what we're laughing yeah. about. <laughs> oh, is that your date running away? I'm like, well, I don't know if you saw what happened in there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so the the situation is, is that uh, Melissa, that singer. Um, uh, the, the journal alludes to the fact that she'd been up for days, she's exhausted, she's taken medication to kind of help with some, uh, you know, to kind of help with some sleep issues or, or staying awake and, and things like that so that she can rehearse for this opera, um, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, I guess at some point in time, you know, this, this Eve being that was in, you know, in her, which we'll find out scientifically why a little bit later, um, you know, it, it started to kind of manifest when the connection with Aya, like RJ mentioned earlier, uh, came to be. So. You know, they're just kind of as confused as, as you, the player, are at this point uh, because, you know, they're like, what, what should we do? What happened? And, you know, they're saying like, oh, what should we tell the public? Because, you know, they're not going to buy that, you know, just random people caught on fire. And it's not really a good, it's not a good out. <laughs> Even though it literally happened, yeah, they're I mean, not going to buy the it. truth <laughs> is not good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and this was before the age of like TikTok and cell phones, right? So I just had to take you to your word. <laughs> Or, or I guess they went in and saw that it was, you know, burnt up. And that yeah. It's probably been good enough, you know. They all just went into their AOL chat rooms and was talking yeah. about it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, they went home and aimed each other. You have no <laughs> idea what just happened to me. So really, what we would, uh, just a small menu I did there. I got rid of the uh, vest you start with. And... Um, moved we, we got a mod permit which is just something you use to modify kit modify guns and stuff like that we don't really need any of those at any point in time so we uh moved the one we got plus um the rehearsal room key T two basic key items the item inventory space in this run is uh something to be managed and it's kind of important it's really their survival horror resource management aspect of the run being able to hold only so many items, which could be upgraded. We get these leveling up points called bonus points, and they can be put into various things, whether it be uh, gun stats or her ATB speed or her item capacity and whatnot. Yeah, and it becomes an issue sometimes. <laughs> the inventory is, is, is something serious in this game sometimes. Yeah, it definitely can. It's awful casually. I feel like your inventory is always full. Yeah. Yeah, and some enemies drop like tons of yeah. stuff. And then you're like, oh, you got a menu after every fight. Like, what do I want to keep? What do I want? And then isn't there just like an item that's just trash? That <laughs> yeah, like, it's, and, it's and, quite it, literally junk. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's junk. <laughs> and in, in first playthroughs, it's not super useful to you, but they do serve a purpose in the new game plus. Oh, really? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you give uh, Wayne enough junk, I believe he gives you guns. Yeah, random guns uh, based on like a certain amount. So like if you give him a certain amount, he's going to give you whatever that tier is. And uh, we do, we were crazy awesome, did a lot of that. Uh, the runner of this game, current world record holder. Uh, he did a lot of uh, the new game plus structuring because the, the way that we do the category for Chrysler building is um, that we will... You know, you don't, you're not asked to build the whole save up. You will just go from EX file and we'll load something that already exists. Mm -hmm. So on that file, we have a lot of those junk guns because uh, those are typically like, you know, you, you can soup them up and make them really, really uh, something special. Now, we're obviously not going to have that luxury in this. And as RJ mentioned, mod permits not going to be super useful either because we already kind of have an ideal thing we want to do with our guns. And I believe, so like with the... Playthroughs we use, or the amount of playthroughs to make the New Game Plus files we use are pretty extensive, but I believe you've done a run from start to finish, haven't you? Like oh, yeah. yeah. Chrysler Building, and uh, you could probably Crazy has done. also done it. It could probably be, yeah, I bet it could be done pretty quickly now, um, just, you know, knowing what I know now. Mm -hmm. um, 
but the Chrysler building as it as uh, a whole, I think that uh, I've always wanted to look into it because it's not as random as it seems. There's like seated, there's like a bunch, you know, it can be like one of a certain amount. So if we got really good at it, we could memorize it. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, but yeah. So if you're listening and up to the challenge. Yeah, yeah. So what I'm saying is if anybody is in chat right now and they're like, I love the Chrysler building, <laughs> come prove it. <laughs> 70 floors, yeah, sign me up. Let me see how many, how, how much you love it, please. <laughs> it is actually pretty cool because like, you know, it, it gives off the appearance of almost being procedurally generated and stuff like that. So it's actually a pretty cool added thing to new game plus. oh it's, yeah i i totally agree and it's i mean that's a good amount of content like mm -hmm. if you were playing casually you could do i mean just as much game time as you spent playing this game which is a relatively short rpg um you could probably double your play time if you did the chrysler building as well and it's like a new experience I and mean, there's more stuff new stuff it's not just um like a new game plus where you play the whole game over again uh, you can but you know the chrysler building is, is something new and unique so don't let me don't let me uh, make it sound greater than it is. Though it's tough, <laughs> it's tough, <laughs> it's tough. Uh, and and the issue is like once you're good enough to like make it all the way through it, you kind of stomp everything. So the, it's it, it's fun when it's challenging, but it, there's some parts that are a little too challenging. RJ has a lot of mashing to do here, so I was uh, I was hoping that I could. You know, with the Chrysler building chat was at least keeping us. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, this is uh, this is a scene he's about to roll into with a guy named Clamp. Uh, he's a scientist who will be responsible for a lot of the bad science that the game uses to explain why things are the way they are. Yeah. And uh, he is a character in the game and in uh, the other sense of the word. He is just. He's a really good typist. Yeah. Uh, you know, imagine, you can't trust anybody who looks at a screen that looks like that all day. <laughs> <laughs> and like, what is he even typing? There's not even a, a like an entry field on that box. On that. <laughs> Just typing, I love he's playing. He's, he's literally <laughs> typing DNA right now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but this would actually be a good time if we have anything to announce. Well, speaking of the Chrysler building, we have a $5 donation from LLK. Had to donate during one of my favorite games, Parasite Eve. Back in the day, I even bought the strategy guide just so I can get clearer images of numerous creepy mitochondria monster designs. How much would it take to get you to go through the Chrysler building? Come on, RPG Limit Break. Can you stand to extend the run by like 15 more hours or something? <laughs> <laughs> That'd probably be pretty close if we were gonna run through it. We also have another $10 donation from Airplane. Parasite Eve is such a neato game, and I'm very hyped to see it on RPGLB. Good luck, RJ. Appreciate it. Thank you so much. You don't mind your run being pushed back, do you, Palmer? Uh, you, not at all. <laughs> in fact, let me just recline this a little bit, and I'll, I'll get a little nap in right here, you know? My flight was pretty long, so... <laughs> Essentially, to sum up that co summarize that conversation, though, they are trying to talk about Eve and what happened at the uh, the opera, and he doesn't really pay them any mind until they bring up the word mitochondria. Like none of them have ever heard about it. Like none of them learned it in every science class they had throughout elementary school. But <laughs> I heard it's the powerhouse of the cell. I've I've heard that too, unconfirmed in this game, but. Yeah, I mean, I went through third grade biology like everybody else. So. <laughs> <laughs> I made the, the noodle plant cell just like everybody else, you know what I'm saying? Like, But yeah, as soon as they mention uh, Eve and mitochondria, he's like, what? And then he doesn't talk to him anymore anyway. So he goes through this long-winded conversation, and then when they actually talk about the things they want to, he's like, you know what, never mind, we're not talking about that. <laughs> Oh, executive dysfunction. Mm -hmm. art, I have typing to do. Art imitates life. <laughs> What's it say on the chalkboard, RJ? Uh, we're yeah. not talking about this. Why did I even tell you that? This is my favorite. Th that looks like a map of Vice City. You know? <laughs> I, I don't know why. I'm convinced that that's what it is. So real, uh, just embarrassing story. When I was doing this uh, a run on a different a different time. Uh, it says DNA in the top left corner, but I read it as Tina. <laughs> Why would it say oh Tina? My gosh. I don't know. Now but... that you say that, though, I totally see yeah. it. I know, and when I said it, everybody who was with me totally just went with it, so I'm like, I'm never going to bring this up again, but I've betrayed myself, and now it's being brought up, and I'm being exposed. 
I just like how they were like, we need to figure this out. And they were like, map, picture of this random lady. And they were like, a chart that's not filled in. DNA question mark? Like, <laughs> it's like that Charlie Day meme. Yeah, it is exactly <laughs> what it is. <laughs> So meanwhile, while we were doing the tutorial in the uh, the armory room with Wayne and Torres, we got a gun, the M16A1 or something, something or other. I just call it the M16. Uh, it'll be the gun we use for... The M16A1, I think, is what it's called. Yeah, something like that. Not actually, they, that's what they do in this game. They're like, it's the same pistol, but it's got a few extra letters and numbers <laughs> at the end of it. Shoots three times as many bullets, and you're like, all right, that's cool, man. Yeah, I mean, I guess it makes sense. Is it a shotgun? Is it a machine gun? Is it a pistol? <laughs> like, let's just be honest. But yeah, so that gun will be uh, our, our new upgrade. So we took all of the stats from the first gun in day one, and we're putting it all into this gun to use for day two. And since we got a, an offense plus two while we were looting in day one, we'll actually be able to approach some of these earlier fights a little differently, depending on uh, a specific item drop coming up in probably about maybe five minutes. But we'll touch on that. But here we are, they got a lead that Melissa Pierce is, well, it's not a lead, they knew Melissa Pierce is supposed to be playing uh, a concert. The lady from the opera is doing a concert in Central Park here, and Daniel knows his son and estranged wife are here. Um, not estranged, ex-wife, that is, that's the term, <laughs> they're divorced. <laughs> uh, so, but he, like, you know, he, he gets super worried about it, so he comes to run here, but he can't go into the park without be, being lit on fire like anyone else. But I was like, you know what? I can go in there, so I'm going to do it. And here we are, starting that journey. Yeah, I liked him. He was basically, he went in there, and he's like, oh, the fire. And she was like, oh, that stinks. And he's like, oh, no, if only I could go in there and get my kid. <laughs> but I can't because of the fire. She's like, oh. Oh, jeez. <laughs> this guy and his kid. Well, oof. Yeah, it's not great. <laughs> I'm going to go up here. <laughs> Don't do it. Oh, let's see, there's oh, the offense plus yeah. two. We're just gonna bait this. So, offense plus two benefit there. We got a cure P, what a random drop. But, um, benefit of getting an offense plus two, we can one shot the little yellow snake with a crit, and no matter what happens, the red snake will die in two shots. Normally, if it's only the two offense plus ones, which is the most common thing you're going to get picking up those items, you'll have to, if you don't get a crit, you'll have to shoot it a third time. And I'm going to do my best. I'm not really good at it during marathon runs, but I'm going to try and keep track of my bullets so we can be optimal. But now that we're done with the mash fest and clamps office, we get to like play the game for a little bit. Just a little bit. Just a, just a little bit. Don't get too excited. But no, Central Park is actually one of the the lead, the Central Park area itself, and then the boss at the end of Central Park is probably some of the um, tougher con like tougher things to do in the entirety of the run. There's so many things that could just go wrong constantly and just tank the entire run, like in a time sense. As long as we play it correctly, we don't, we'll, we'll be fine. But you could just lose time here for no reason. Yeah, the luxury that you do have uh, in a marathon, is, as RJ has displayed, is um, you, can, you can take a turn or two to heal yourself. Uh, and that is, you know, something Aya is capable of. Uh, but, you know, it's, it's not always an option. There are some bosses where it's like, you know, no, you, you win or you lose. Yeah, you know I mean, that's it. <laughs> All right, here's one of the items I was saying could help us play the next two fights differently, depending. All right, we want the tool. That's good. Oh, oh. So we're going to take, we, we kind of went into that room to get the Zuki, and we made a little detour to the left side to pull out a grenade launcher. We're immediately going to use that tool we got to take the stats from that grenade launcher and put it on this gun. And that will allow us to possibly one-shot these crows with a crit. I didn't want to do that. <laughs> Targeted. I thought I was close enough to the other one. So, I mean, that's good that we pulled this off. So we'll try, we'll try to work this, this way. I'm going to get hit a lot because of... I thought I was going to shoot it, but it didn't work out. Just move. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, boy. <laughs> we should be fine here. This attack is very dodgeable as long as we're ready for it. 
The game's not giving RJ um, incredible ATB when he starts the fights. Well, that actually would have been pretty nice to pick up. <laughs> For the safety wise, it was two medicines and, <laughs> and just ammo. Yeah, so we're gonna check. Actually, ammo is fine. There we go. Pre-render background giving yeah, us a weird hitbox. Say, there's that. <laughs> there's that invisible thing that's always there. Yeah. <laughs> No, this one. Man, that thing got blasted. So we should, if we're if we're fortunate enough, we can get both of these crows here. Nope. I got one. Doesn't save us a turn, but it saves us a bullet. So on that level up is the first instance that we get a bonus point to use. I save it for later because we're going to go pick up another chest to get a tool and do another gun menu so i kind of like to just lump it together if i can so some dicey stuff early on but and, and you know it's going to do it to you like the first <laughs> 50 minutes or the first hour of this game is probably the the, the toughest toughest bout uh, you don't have amazing weapons. You don't have amazing health or, you know, EXP or anything like that. So um, this is the most volatile section of the run, definitely. Here we go. We'll get another uh, pleasant cut scene to watch. The more I watch this one, the more wild it is to me. Yeah, this one is actually yeah. a really uh, intense cutscene. I was uh... turns everybody into strawberry jelly. <laughs> Smuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you're hungry. <laughs> yeah, for this game to have been released in '98, you know, in America, that's uh, that's something right there. You know, you don't just you don't just turn everybody into goo every day, you know. <laughs> But as a good friend of ours, uh, Eyes on B, pointed out the last time I was doing this run in something, uh, they all turned into goo, but for some reason their skeletons are just like magically gone. They just didn't go anywhere. Cause he, into goo as well. Yeah, I guess they gooed later. <laughs> the it, bones take longer to goo. It honestly reminds me of Ghostbusters 2 with the slime in the sewers. The bone is the powerhouse, the goo. Mm -hmm. It's Vigo. <laughs> <laughs> I always like appreciate these little scenes where Aya runs directly up to Eve and they just have a little chat and Eve flies away. Incredibly yeah. slowly at that. <laughs> yeah, she's like, you'll never catch me. <laughs> yeah, or like you run right up to her. Like, you know what I mean? Yeah, at you were in her face. That, she could have just fired a laser beam at you. You know, <laughs> <laughs> know she's capable. <laughs> We've seen it. Yeah. We will see it again. Watch out for that guy on the ground. Yeah, no, we're just going to run right past him. He needs help, but not He from didn't us. wear his sunscreen. Yeah, not from us. So I'm making a slight detour here. We're gonna pick up a safety item, a revive, if I happen to actually die in all of the chances where we've been extremely close. But now, if it actually happens, I uh, get a, I get one, I get one pass. And we're gonna save that one, hopefully. As, yeah. As long as we need it. My man RJ is gonna get through the whole run with revives in inventory. That's the dream. That's how it always works. Yes. I want it to be there and cause a problem for me. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's like, I should throw away one of these. <laughs> Here we go. The second chest I was talking about. This will be another tool. So we'll get rid of the other. Or a super inventory. tool. I have never seen I've, that. I've never seen it either, actually. Uh, Supposedly, it's like a 1% chance. Um, but I don't know. I've never seen it. What does no. the super tool do? I, that's, that's actually, I'm not even sure what I would do if I got it there, you know what I mean? Like, it would actually ruin the run. <laughs> <laughs> so a, a super tool is a, uh, a tool that's used to strip. So whenever you use a tool in the game for the people at home or anybody not familiar, you're going to take stats, one specific stat from a weapon, and move it to another. So it can be the damage on that, or the amount of the bullet capacity, or it can be the, you know, the ice bullets, or, or something like that, one of the uh, elements of the gun. But a super tool, will shed that stat and, and not destroy the gun. Uh, whereas a standard tool, whatever you're pulling it off of is gone. Uh, so you have to make sure that you really like, you know, whatever you're deciding on. Uh, and 
as such, you can imagine that if you screw those menus up in marathons, it can sometimes be a pain in the butt. Uh, I say that because I did it once. I'm trying to just play the, the ATB was so bad, I'm trying to play this a little less yeah, no, aggressively. Not. Oh my goodness. Leave me alone. This is how it feels when I have to feed my animals in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> See, you, you just slip up once and then I just got hit for 36 damage. Yeah, it's like one sees you and the other sees you. And they have like, uh, the birds especially, They ha not only do they potentially fly into you to do what is called contact damage, which is uh, what it sounds like. When you run into the, to the physical box of an enemy, it'll push you back for about a quarter second of hit stun, as well as do a small amount of damage. Um, and RJ is, <laughs> RJ is actually having a bunch of like, there's so much going on under the hood here I wanna <laughs> talk about. So RJ had just really terrible luck there, and I'm gonna cover why. At the beginning, his ATB was very poor, so even though um, you know, we're going to, as we level, get better, and, and that stuff's going to matter less. In the early beginning of the game, because a lot of your survivability is, is tied to movement, RJ is, you know, waiting for his gun to charge up as well as having to move. So it, it kind of forces him into some less desirable movement options if his ATB is really low, which you saw him doing with those birds. And then he had the unlucky random thing that happens when you... Uh, fire and kill something right as you are on your last bullet and it click. <laughs> it won't fire another one. Yeah. So yeah, um, my man is over here just getting the business from the game right now and handling it like a champ. You, you, the viewers at home have no idea <laughs> that he's just getting absolutely ghosted over here by the, this luck. It's, it's so it's so wild. Don't. Oh, there you go. Yeah. All planned, baby. Hey, another cure something. Yeah, and those, I think those are not common either. I mean, like this is, this is something. So you're you're gonna get the ammo. you're gonna get the tool out of this box. The YOLO tool? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that we would get YOLO tool yeah, on this run. Crit, crit, thank you. Got him. There you go. That's a good dodge. That's a hard attack to dodge. He made it look easy. Oh, unlucky. The game was like, yeah, you thought. No, I'm telling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Good ammo. Yeah, so RJ is, um, you know, we're giggling about the lack of crits and stuff, but, uh, you know, running out of bullets is a very, it's unlikely, but it does happen occasionally. Uh, thankfully, we haven't. No. Oh, it didn't oh, happen. Wow, dude. You couldn't wish it into existence. Break, I know. You can't even, <laughs> can't even get a bone thrown at you, man. <laughs> Woo. Yeah, so, uh, Canonically, or story-wise, up to this point, uh, as RJ articulated earlier, we're going to hopefully rescue Daniel's son from, you know, he was at this event. Um, and, and we're working our way there, and obviously Eve, which she'll, you know, she does throughout the game, she shows up where we're at, she taunts us a little bit, runs deeper into the maze, and, you know, you, oh, I'm gonna catch you. Uh, so RJ is, is you know, at, at the end of the maze here, uh, one of my favorite, absolute favorite things in the whole game to do. Oh, nice. Yeah, so there's like the split actual getting the kills on things. Yeah. Time for the uh, most random boss in the game, pretty much. This is such a fun fight. I feel like all of the bosses are just like weird and random, but <laughs> this one is probably one of the hardest bosses. I'm just going to try my best. We're definitely not shooting this guy. Not going to have time. I would say that's probably the most important thing with this with this fight is just having good judgment on when to actually attack. Dang, I'm lucky. Certain um, certain positions you can stand in, and then if you move a certain way, you can almost what always guarantee like a certain pathing on like those things. Um, but it, it, for the, the big mechanic here is that you're going to notice now that he's killed the first one is that the others are growing quite a bit larger. I was and, worried that wasn't going to work. Yeah, I was too. <laughs> that, and and um, <laughs> the, uh, so he, once he killed the first worm, the others grew bigger, and now they also gain HP at the same time. So now oh, that he's reduced it here. to two, they're going to be larger still with more HP. Um, so essentially the, the strategy RJ is, is kind of implementing here is to kind of get rid of the first two, you know, when you can, as, as, as well as you can. And then, um, you know, ideally kind of split damage or, or deal with, shoot one twice, shoot with the other twice, and whatever you can do to hopefully ideally kill them both on the same turn or at least close to it. Uh, because remember, when one dies, the next one gets bigger and gains HP. So if it's at one HP, I don't know about this. You got it, baby, you got it. 
Oh, nice. That's good. No, oh, I wanted to do it the other way. That's okay. We're back on. We're back, back even, yeah. Maybe we can get them both there anyway. So, um, yeah, what we don't want to see is the huge worm come up at the end, because even if RJ's whittled one down to one HP and the other, you know, it dies, then the oh. Okay, good. Perfect, perfect. So yeah. now we're going to see the big one, and he'll have a little bit of, he'll have 50 more HP. Um, so hopefully RJ had that one down low enough to where it shouldn't take a whole lot of shots here. And uh, as you saw RJ's dodge right there, the, he, he did a great job of going far, far right because the hitbox on this worm is nowhere near what it looks like. Should die here. Nice, nice. All right. Yeah, that was a, a clean fight. I mean, played it safe. Uh, you, you gotta, you know, that's, a, that's how you want that to go. Let's just get rid of these right now. Decent amount of defenses, though. Yeah, I think we got three of four, and then the one from the yellow box of four. Pretty good. Here we go. We're going to fight Eve for the third time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> yeah, RJ is chomping through this. Uh, that The Worms fight, he made it look a lot easier than it is. I promise that if you go try to pick it up and learn that speed run strat, that'll be one of the fights that that and Centipede are probably the ones that take you the longest to, to really get down. They're frustrating. Yeah, and a lot of this game just comes down to positioning at any given time and knowing where you should be standing based on probably what ATB you started with. This fight is a little different. You could kind of go full aggressive and try to have her do melee attacks all the time, but I'm going to try and just stay out of her face because she'll do kind of a similar situation to the very uh, or the second time we fight her, where she'll do like a laser attack rather than try to hit me. And as long as you kind of stand in a specific corner, she'll target you, and you move to the opposite corner, you're good. Yeah, no, the, <laughs> that's a RJ mentioned hitboxes that linger early. Except when she tries one. to jabate me like that. <laughs> <laughs> what the heck? <laughs> Once that ability is not on the screen, it still has like a second of lingering hitboxes too. It's tough. There we go. We got that was usually clean. usually on the third. Oh, wow, that was a really good fight. That was clean. Yeah, usually on the um, third turn. She's at the back of the card there, and you can kind of... It's the only one that I can consistently bait out a melee attack, because you could stand directly in her face the entire time, and she won't hit you, ever. Because ideally, this the fastest way to go back about this fight is getting hit and just not getting killed. Or getting, like, a dodge, so you maybe survive with little health. Because this is the end of the day. We're not fighting anything else. We have a, a bit of cut scenery. We have a nice uh, uh, cart ride through Central Park. Believe it or not, this cost her fifty-five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it was—it's a, a really missed opportunity. Yeah. Uh, what's that song, "Flaming Chariot" or whatever? Yeah. Yeah, the, um, the this whole section right here is kind of has some surrealism elements to it. When I was playing the first time, I was like, "What? what? There's a flaming horse, and who's this? Where are we?" Yeah, she could have easily just, you know, done the thing everybody does and just, like, give that horse a smack on the behind and it would have started running. But yeah, she's like, nah, yeah, I'm going to yeah. burn this horse without looking at it to yeah. show off. Yeah, that's not that's not very chill of Eve. Little, yeah, that's for sure. And here Daniel's just still on the outside. Has not <laughs> yeah, moved a single gotta step. Gotta respect it, man. He was, a, he was <laughs> stout. He was not going anywhere. If there's one thing that I love about Daniel, and pretty much I love everything about Daniel, let's just get that clear. Yeah. But uh, he's actually, their dynamic as partners is actually very wholesome. Like, he is very supportive of her at all times. Even in the beginning when uh, the chief wants to kind of sweep the whole opera event under the rug, he still believes her. And he's a pretty good dad. Cares about Ben a lot. Yeah, Ben uh, just so happened to be going to the restroom at the, at, at the time of meltdown. So <laughs> very fortunate uh, he didn't get caught in the crossfire there. We cannot say the same thing about his uh, ex-wife, Lorraine. Yeah, poor one out for Lorraine. She was, uh, she was part of the goo. We'll see her later, though. Yeah. In, well, not specifically. but <laughs> Yeah, there's a little bit of her on like, the side of the wall in the sewers. <laughs> <laughs> So what is it? It's everybody from the event. I'm just like, well, how do you know that? That's impressive. 
I think it, yeah, well, well, I guess we could talk about it later, yeah. but I'm pretty sure she, like, even yells Lorraine at yeah, the yeah, goo yeah, ball yeah. in the sewer later. <laughs> so here we have the, uh, the, the beautiful um, repeated element of Parasite Eve, where at the end of every day, typically you're going to get a little, um, a little rundown, a little recap, some, uh, a, a little nightcap for a story. It's going to tell you, you know, in this case, um, some foreshadowing, where... Um, you know, realizing the severity of the danger that Eve is now presenting now that there's two instances, it's not as easy to kind of like ignore. Um, you know, Daniel is obviously, you know, now very, very much on board with, with, with her claim because, you know, he saw it firsthand, he's experienced it. So now the police are, you know, taking it seriously. And um, as a result, Daniel brings his kid, Ben, here to the squad. And he says, will you please keep him safe? And they're like, yeah, we'll just put him in with the police dog to save his room in the, in the building. This guy stops a car with his mind. <laughs> <laughs> it really does. <laughs> it, just, it moves so fast. And budgets must have been bad. They only have one police dog. <laughs> uh, I don't... Just absolute mayhem trying to evacuate the city. Yeah, like what, man? Like how does it? Who, how do you lose like, one it's, skate? Well, it's not so bad. Like I don't imagine. Like say there's an apocalypse. Like driving on my car onto somebody else's car, like that does nobody any good, right? <laughs> How does it even happen? I know. And meanwhile, Daniel's driving at a thousand miles an hour on every single road yeah, in the yeah. city, not hitting a single car. But these guys, these people are trying to leave the city for like at probably a slow evacuation pace, and their cars are all yeah. flipped over. Here's our uh, first introduction to one of the other main characters of the story from here on out. That's Maeda. He's trying to just get into the city, and the police aren't really letting him until the one catches on fire. That guy was really bad at stop, dropping, and rolling. He wasn't even trying. But Maeda uses that as a distraction to actually get into the yeah, city. Yeah, I'm starting to believe that they just didn't go to elementary school. Yeah, this is, yeah. Uh, <laughs> stop, drop, and roll, <laughs> mitochondria. Like, these are <laughs> fundamental core things you learn as a human being in yes. American public schools, you know? <laughs> By the time you get to fifth grade, you know mitochondria. You know that. Uh, and that's really about it. <laughs> <laughs> Those are the only yeah, things no, you I, learn. I really thought I was going to be stop, drop, and rolling like a lot. You know? <laughs> <laughs> like you need to learn this. And I'm like, dude, we really just turn a certain age to start catching on fire. <laughs> Apparently, that's here we not go. The case. This is my apartment. favorite scene in the game. Your average Soho apartment. <laughs> This apartment would cost you three thousand dollars a month right now, and you're gonna like it. Yeah, yeah. and you're and you're gonna have to deal with it. And that's gonna be trendy. Look at that dumpster fire. It does come with all the amenities you need. I just got to imagine that like that vent, while extremely large, <laughs> is probably not enough to keep you from, you know, being oxygen deprived. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. At least it's got a TV though. Yeah, yeah, and uh, the screens in this in this world are not stellar. Um, they're all flashing. They got some issues. The, uh, I guess that's a byproduct of like chaos. It's like, oh no, all the TVs are flashing now. This is how bad <laughs> things have gotten. <laughs> <laughs> I remember when the TVs used to not flash yeah. at me. Oh man. Before the things. <laughs> but yeah, like even still, like, you know, Maeda probably dragged that trash can in for heat. Sure, whatever. But this person was living like this before the, the, the whole trash can yeah, came in because they evacuated only like a few hours ago at this point in the story. Yeah, I mean, there's like 40 bottles everywhere. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's the bed is clearly not made, but you know, not bad space. You know, not bad, I, not bad bones for for Manhattan. Yeah, honestly, you know? I don't think you're getting a bigger place. Yeah, or a bigger vent. Yeah. yeah, true. Yeah, I know. Maybe he escaped through that because uh, he definitely <laughs> could have. He might be in there now. <laughs> It's his escape yeah, hatch. Yeah, yeah, he's just going to hide in there until <laughs> it's over. Uh, and, you know, as RJ mentioned earlier, obviously the backgrounds are pre-rendered. So we have, like, these really nice, in certain instances, like, really nice, like, obviously kind of HD-feeling backgrounds. And then you have what look like goofy pixels kind of on t put on top of it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, like, when Aya is sitting on the bed there, it cracks me up. And then when she stands up, you have, like, this trash that's on the ground. And she's kind of just like hovering over it, you know. What I mean? It's it's weird. Her foot's, foot's like almost in the suitcase, but almost not. Um, I, I really wish that I could get like a a dump of like every b rendered background in the game. That would be really cool. Oh, it would be cool. Sorry. 
Y'all got some time for some donations? Absolutely. Oh, sure. We have a $15 donation from Kaboink. I love this game. But it woefully misinformed me about what my about <laughs> mitochondria when I took high school biology the following year after it came out. <laughs> my teacher was not impressed with my wild assumptions of what mitochondria can do. We also have a five dollar donation from Uncle Wooly. Let's go, RJ. Happy to see good events like RPG LB make it in this world. GG to all the runners. Thank you so much. Yeah, do not take the science this game tries to push on you and tell it to anybody seriously. <laughs> It is, it is out there, to put it nicely. But it is based semi on a real hokey science theory from the 60s. So, I mean, the, the, the theory is real, not the science. Yeah, yeah. But. yeah the, uh, the game's actually based on a book, and the, um, the author, you know, had that book turned into a movie. So this is, this, you know, the story of this game runs kind of adjacent to the book it, it's not like the book is not about this um, it, it's about a different situation in Japan which is supposedly kind of like the birthplace of the mitochondrial Eve so it's almost like a like a precursor so to speak but uh, man if you if you want to watch that uh, movie I believe it's complete you know it's so old now that it's it's available free online you can watch it in the same quality of the game uh, <laughs> 240p probably not getting much better than that. Uh, and it is a hoot now it's completely in Japanese mind you uh, and the subtitles are um, they're pretty well done like the translations uh, not not terrible but um i'm not gonna lie to you it's not a great movie <laughs> it, it, it's, it's something that's cool to watch to, if you're a fan of the game and the fan of the series to be like oh yeah you know that's a you know i've, I've done that and i watched that movie or whatever but yeah i can see how it would have not done super well it was just a little uh, strange uh, but a lot of those if you ever do go read the book uh, which is still available you can find english versions and stuff like that online um, you will see a lot of the similarities and um, things where you'd be like, oh, you know, so it does kind of draw some parallels there, which is interesting. There we go. Another another day, another gun upgrade. Yeah, quite literally. Yes. <laughs> Typical day in New another York. Another day, another gun. I mean, I come from Texas, and that's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> we did break into a gun shop Whoops. there and uh, picked, picked it apart a little bit to suit our needs. Yeah, and Daniel, he just shot the glass out. Like, uh, yeah, we didn't really get to talk about it, but he was like, yeah, I is standing by the door, and Daniel's like, get out of the way, I, and she takes two steps deliberately farther in front of the door. And, and then he, he just shoots and anyway. Still, yeah, and he still blasts it. Angelina Jolie's that bad boy. <laughs> Hit him with the James McAvoy. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's not enough polygons to see it, but he definitely did some sweet, some sweet uh, directional tricks right there. Aya is safe. Uh, as you see there, RJ ran in. He grabbed a little uh, little something-something off the ground. That's going to keep RJ a little safer than he already is, which in this game, you know, matters a lot. Uh, and then one of the actually hardest things in the game to do, RJ just managed to get there first try, no problem, and that's enter that door. That's, He's not joking. That's not a, 100% not a joke. Yeah, that is a very, for some reason, that trigger is, is whack. And if you get it wrong, Daniel will be like, what are you doing? Get in the front. <laughs> and I'm like, dude, I'm trying. Uh, just let me in the car. Yeah. Yeah, for some reason, there's a hitbox for the back door, and you can't go in it. Yeah, you have yeah, to sit in the passenger seat, and they yeah, like yeah. program dialogue to yell at you about Why is that a thing? I never even thought, why did he even? Uh, I've always just been mad at seeing it. But now that I think about it, I'm like, it makes even less sense now, yeah. But yeah, it's like a very particular line because you can actually run like against the car underneath it and not hit the trigger. Rashing it, X. Yeah, yeah. yeah it's, and super, it's super strange. But you know, you do it a couple hundred times and you get the line up. Mm -hmm. We get some more uh, deep lore here. Yeah, so I want you to appreciate that this little science lab microscope here sees things at like a subatomic level. <laughs> <laughs> Computer screen is still going. <laughs> He's like, yeah, I know, right? His, oh, I gotta imagine his bill is terrible. <laughs> he gets grants for this. What do you yeah, mean? Yeah, true that. Yeah, and I like how he's in a in like an archaeologist museum. This is a dinosaur museum. Like he's like a biologist, right? But um, as we'll find out, Clamp is not super well respected because he is chasing after this kind of you know crazed pseudoscience, and. Um, He's been forced into, you know, kind of the position he's in now. So it wasn't necessarily his first choice to be at this, uh, at this dinosaur museum. But as you can see here, um, you know, he, uh, Maeda, gives himself a little incision, a little tiny prick, and he scans his blood, which is susceptible to the E virus. 
and he's going to kind of show us uh, what it does here. Now, these little crunch berries, they're going to combine. <laughs> <laughs> and these things are the Eve virus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the, the starfish attack the crunch berries. <laughs> and, and what do you know? Eve, right? He's infected. Yep. And, and it's... We, we saw all that through that tiny microscope. <laughs> And he's basi- he's saying that's basically the reason why people are burning, why Eve could turn them into goo. And then we'll do some a deeper dive into why Aya might not be affected as much. And actually gets powers from it rather than being affected negatively. Yeah, so, so Maeda, um, to, to kind of piggyback off the book story, he's, his character comes from Japan with the plot of the book, right? So he says, hey, I just came from Japan where we had this big instance um, because of, you know, blah, blah, blah. And he doesn't go into in the, like really, really great detail to where you're like, son of a gun, that's right out of the book. But it kind of alludes to, you know, the, the, uh, the, the going ons that happened there. And then they kind of tie it in, you know, by his character coming over, that's kind of the bridge uh, of those two points. And uh, so from where his stance is, though, he's coming and he's saying, you know, I, I knew this was going to happen. I came over here to try to get ahead of it, but it looks like it was too late. And he runs into the one person in the city that happens to be immune. And she's like, well, I wonder why it doesn't affect me. And he says, it doesn't affect you. He puts it under the thing. And, uh, and we have this lovely scene here to walk. <laughs> More crunch berries. Yeah, as you can see, her crunch berries, they look a little different. <laughs> They're super crunch berries. Yeah, those are the blues. You got the ones with the only blues in the box. <laughs> those are yellows. And there you go. That's science. That's literally the entire plot of the game. Yeah, the science, 100%. baby. <laughs> if you don't know what this game is about at that point, then I am so sorry. Uh, <laughs> that is really all you're going to get. <laughs> they assume at this point that you got it because from here, they just start moving forward. You know what I mean? <laughs> they really do, yeah. yeah. It just it gets wackier yeah. and wackier as the game goes on. They're like, hey, um, you know, we, you got the, you saw the cutscenes, you know, one person it hurts, one person it doesn't, and, and that's that. And then from there, they really don't revisit the science a whole lot. Um, you know, and Maeda tries his best, but you know, us Americans were like, listen, pipe down, we're gonna shoot it with our guns. <laughs> 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 and um, you know, and that's kind of like the brilliance of the game. It is a you know, it came out around it, right in between Final Fantasy VIII and IX, um, and I, you know, there are some some rumors that the Final Fantasy VIII team worked on this game initially, and then there was something that took place—a death in the family or something like that—for one of the higher ups, and uh, and it got shelved, and then this game got picked up later. Now I don't know how how much truth there is to that, but you do see a lot of, you know, Final Fantasy VII and VIII influences, right? Uh, did I say eight and nine earlier? I meant seven and eight if if I did, but um, you can see that. You know, I see a little cloud, and yeah. at the same time, I see a little squall, or I see... You can tell they were getting the polygon counts just slowly higher and higher. Right? Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, Aya's legs almost look like whole legs, you know? <laughs> <laughs> she is, like, 65% leg. Yeah, yeah. They're like, do those legs go all the way up? Yes. <laughs> yes, they yes, do. They, she is <laughs> all... Her waist is, like, up they, here. Man. They are she underneath my coat. <laughs> that definitely has more leg definition than Zell does. Yeah. Yeah, and it's... it's um. Oh, you got the skin. I know. Oh. Look at that. You're either cursed or blessed. It's probably cursed. Yeah. So um, that was a skip right there where we, it just happens sometimes. Saves it like a, I mean, we always used to say it saves a second. I'm not even really sure it does. You yeah, know? I'm not like, sure it does either. I mean, by, it might be a 0.7 of a second or something, <laughs> but, uh, which in this game is like, oops, I forgot to keep mashing. You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> so, so it's not a huge deal. Uh, we don't shoot for it or anything. It's just something we kind of catalog and say, oh, it runs. You know, we, ma- we make a bit out of it. Um, so RJ got it for whatever, you know, if you're team cursed or team blessed, you know, we'll let you guys figure that out in chat. Yeah. If, if, you're... You, if you want to donate team blessed or team cursed, uh, <laughs> let us know. And we'll just kind of field, you know, what, how we're feeling that's going as the run goes on, because so far it's feeling pretty cursed. I'm not going to. Oh, God, there. it was cursed before that happened. Yeah, you've been <laughs> you've been handling it stu- like just uh, doing a phenomenal job. But the people at home might not appreciate because he's he's playing it so cool over here. But some of these have been stressful. <laughs> And uh, it's of no fault of his own in most cases. This is a, uh, sometimes the bosses will just be like, like worms, for instance. Sometimes you'll run up and they'll be like, smack. And you're like, oh, well, everything's ruined. <laughs> <laughs> Guess I'll try again. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Here we go after meeting with Clamp, who is still in the city for some reason and they don't care. Like, 
Everyone else is evacuated. The science guy's still here. And they're like, well, I guess he can be here. It is his lab or something. <laughs> and then they come back to the NYPD and it's kind of disheveled. So naturally, Dan uh, Daniel's like, Ben's here and runs right off. But before we're allowed to join him, Maeda has to give us this completely uh, useful item. Yeah, he does that. Uh, he's going to give us a handful of items, and we try to get rid of them as quickly as possible. Uh, he says things like, don't ever get rid of this. And we say, like, okay. <laughs> and the first thing we do is we're like, please, somebody take this. Sure, pal. Yeah. <laughs> hey, Wayne, I got something for you, buddy. Yeah. Uh, there are some later in the game that he gives us that we can't get rid of, and the reason for that is because they hold spots in case you need to take your gun and armor over into the EX mode. Uh, so you have to have those two inventory spots available. So the game does that so that, you know, it's not going to have issues. They probably could have come up with a better way to code that, that it didn't cost the person two slots, but I don't know. <laughs> well, you could, yeah, no. yeah. I mean, I just feel like there's probably a solution. There. You don't want the Hamaya charm? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Squaresoft is a small indie company. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Some slack. They At were. the time, they were growing, just budding. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they had just released that small game, Final Fantasy VII. <laughs> <laughs> this was their bailout. Yeah, you know. <laughs> Mash too hard. For some reason, you can't back out of uh, this menu without. Oh my gosh! I know how to play. <laughs> so here we go. Getting immediately getting rid of that charm and um, the Zuki. Please open this chest. <laughs> I'm gonna grab this medicine too. Just the way this is going, we're grabbing all the safeties. Oh yeah. I, shoot. I believe you on that one. So this screen right here, our first instance of possibly getting a refight, which we did. Um, after you go through a screen that forces a fight on you, there's a basically a fifth. Nice, moved out of the way. There's a basically a 50% chance to get the fight again when you come through the room. And if you were to go through it uh, again, please die. Oh man, nice. There's that junk uh, that we famously talked about. Uh, I'm just gonna do this. And it's it's kind of bitter because in the speed run, it, it's it's not clever. You know what I mean? Like it's in the in the actual game, it's like junk, and it's like, oh, is it? Because it's actually like the most valuable thing, so it's kind of like clever in that sense. But in the speed run, it is actually junk. Uh, so every time we see it, it is something that we have to get rid of. I mean, it is. As long as we play the game, there's never a use for us to use junk. So it purely exists in this uh, in the speedrun category to ruin our inventory, make us menu more often, which slows yes. us down. But now that we've found uh, the place where Ben should be and he's not there, uh, we get the banger music for the rest of the day. Yep. I believe the uh, composer of this is the same composer of um, SMRPG as well. So just a really nice resume there, you know. Man, you're getting junked out, dude. This is. Luckily, they didn't take that one. Yeah, I just usually you get like a medicine or something dropped every once in a while, but poor RJ, he's <laughs> doesn't even have options. Poor guy. So I'm actually gonna just talk to him again. He gives us uh, 15 ammo because of the a newer strat to the run is when we upgrade to the M11, which is the gun we're using now, which we haven't really talked about because it's different, but. Uh, we used to menu a rate of fire two to the gun, but now we don't do that anymore. We opt for more offense early, so it helps us on the back end of the run later. Uh, so it is possible if we're getting some bad damage rolls that we could blow through the ammo because of that rate of fire, especially if we get both fights again on the same day. Yikes. See, so yeah, RJ mentioned it earlier. Um, a lot of what the variations in time come down to because the game is... Um, pretty linear, I guess is a good way to say it. The There's not a whole lot of places to save or lose time, you know, after a certain point, after you've done a certain amount of runs. So the random encounters that RJ has been, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, have gotten both of them so far, you know, that really ends up making a big deal. Ideally, if you ask most runners, they would say you get zero of the two in the NYPD, zero of the four in the hospital, and then you get the ones you need later when they're worth more. Um, but RJ is uh, he's doing the old opposite, so we'll see how that goes. Bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see how it works out for me. <laughs> oh my goodness. I don't know if you, did you equip the uh, armor? Yes. Yeah, I did. Okay, good. 
Yeah, that's a common mistake. Dude, I, I, yeah, I was scared because I always do it and I die. It makes me sad. Yeah, you get like immediately roasted <laughs> by the next yeah, fight. Yeah. <laughs> One of the two revives gone. Ideally, we want to keep saving the revives, but really we're picking up the two revives that we've picked up so far because of the boss of this day. And we'll get into that. But I guess we should talk about submachine guns that we're using now because they operate a little differently than anything we've used so far. Um, submachine guns have really fast high rate of fire and they have pretty good ATB speed. Uh, but one of the drawbacks of it is that it has random targeting. So positioning becomes even more important. But it comes at the price of it has a chance to fire bonus bullets in the clip. So this gun has a rate of fire 5. It could possibly fire. Okay, are y'all going to come anywhere near me? <laughs> what is this? You sure you got the armor? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah, what the hell? Or uh, heck? That was very stressful. Yeah, I know. No, 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 it wasn't. It was planned. <laughs> Leave me alone. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, I, I, I clearly do not have it on. Why not? Oh, it said I read no armor. And I was like, there's no armor in my inventory because it's equipped. So yeah. I, need, I need to heal before I go into this next fight. So he was showing you exactly what we were talking about there. Like if you're, if you're. Oh my goodness. He had the revives, <laughs> thankfully. Well, when you have revives, you you play a little bit more relaxed. You know? So <laughs> uh, it's it's not that big a deal. Once well, once you for, b pop the first one, then it's like uh oh, <laughs> you know. And then it starts <laughs> to feel a bit. I've uh, I have uh, all unless you know Shiva is, is something else, but I have uh, full faith that my man RJ is going to make it through with both revives <laughs> to the point where it becomes annoying. And, uh, <laughs> Well, well, you're going to get the greatest Shiva fight ever in, in this run where it just completely doesn't matter, you know? It's going to be like, hey, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to throw you a bone, per se. You know that show, I Should Have Died? <laughs> <laughs> They're going to make an entire season's worth of episodes based on the moments of this run where I have oh, <laughs> been uh, either done something myself or just been blasted by the game. I need to heal. I'm saying it out loud, so I do it. So um, right there, Baker, uh, and obviously we did some, you know, there was some serious foreshadowing going on where we, um, you know, Ben, coincidentally, they're like, keep him safe, give him to the dog. And then it was like, oh man, could not have picked a worse place to leave him. Who would have guessed? <laughs> um, and unfortunately we do, the, the one <laughs> soul pup at the uh, NYPD does turn to a monster. Um, you know, the game doesn't really explain it, but um, I'm led to believe that animals are a little bit more susceptible. I'm in the camp to believe that people are, um, that people are, um, like, they all have varying sensitivities. And Daniel is, like, somebody who's obviously pretty sensitive, so we couldn't get anywhere near the park. And animals are a little easier, I don't know, but that's my working theory. Now, there's a lot of animal manipulation in the cutscenes in this game. Not the first and the second. All right, we're bringing it bringing it back. Low key fights bleeding. when you have the right armor on. <laughs> uh, the crux of this fight healing all the way or not? I'm I'm just gonna do it. Here on ammo. All right, here we go. It's Shiva time. So she, uh, the law of conservation of mass doesn't apply because Shiva was actually able to turn into a bigger, larger entity. And I guess that's because of the extra goo that, I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to make sense of it. Needless goo, to say, the goo science. Needless to say, she's big, she's bad, and she is very scary in this fight. Um, all of her moves pretty much work perfectly around, wow, uh, right, right away. All of her moves kind of work perfectly around the vest the strategy that the speedrun utilizes. So as you can see, RJ is intelligently taking damage, sometimes intentionally, in order to uh, pop a, his vest the healing effect on his vest, which it's about a 35% HP threshold, I think, maybe 30. Ooh, a head's dead already? That's nice. pretty good. And um, so he's trying his best here to make sure that he doesn't take too much damage to die before it heals him, right? So he wants to fall in that window, obviously not past it, not before it. Now Shiva has abilities Ooh, an empty that turn. will oftentimes put not you... empty. Ooh, will put you right outside of the bite, can do like 80 damage. The lasers can do a ton. RJ is... Uh, 
getting some good rolls as well as, oh, well done, dude. Dude, that is absolutely one of the sketchiest fights in the game. Well done. It really ends up being, I actually got some dodges in there, which probably helped, you don't know. Basically, if you're below 90 health, you could die at any moment. Yeah, 100%. And uh, some dodges probably helped me out. And then actually not being super rude on top of it, because honestly, I equate it to just a coin flip. Most of the time when I'm doing the run, and I know you're kind of the same way, when you do Shiva, we literally just stand there oh, and, and, sh and, and yeah. shoot and just hope I don't die. Yeah, that's <laughs> the fastest way to do it is to just mash X so that you're taking your turns as soon as your ATB is full. And yeah, that's our strat there. We just hope that the vest wins. <laughs> and and, and uh, sometimes it do, sometimes it do not. And I guess, did we ever actually like get into the vest? Yeah, yeah, so um, I, I kind of touched on it a little bit there. The vest... Um, well, while I wasn't wearing it. <laughs> yeah, hey, the, the vest that RJ picked up has an effect when you fall below about 30% of your HP threshold. It's going to heal you. Um, and, you know, RJ made good use of it. In fact, you really didn't burn a whole lot of medicines there. No. Uh, Shiva can heal, which can drag the fight on for a very long time. She can do the AoE circle attack, which instantly halves your HP. So you can start at the HP at 185. She can instantly have your HP, and then she can crit on the dive and kill you. So it can be like that quick sometimes. And uh, it, it's, 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 you know, just beyond uh, frustrating sometimes. RJ did a great job. I mean, that was a stellar fight. Both revives. Coming out of Shiva with both revives is actually like, that's monumental. Those are, I mean, that, that, that fight is what the revives are for, basically. Yeah. yeah. Because even though Worms is tough, with enough practice, you can get through it. And, you know, you can heal in Worms and, like, mm -hmm. have it actually be worthwhile. Healing against Shiva is almost completely pointless. Because you could use a heal three. I think you have a three at that point by the end of the day. And um, maybe with the extra fights. And then she just goes and has your health. And it didn't matter. Yeah. Yeah, sometimes you can run into that fight with not full HP, and it's fine because like she's gonna have it anyway. Yeah, half of 140 is 70 as opposed to 80. You know, so it's like, yeah, it, it can. Yeah, it's it's a weird fight. We don't have great ways to deal with it, um, and that's kind of why it, it is a, a point of frustration. But typically, past it, you're feeling pretty good. So I'm yeah. like, you know, hopefully things start turning around for my guy here. <laughs> the uh, the Randy, you're gonna get zero repeat encounters, and then it's actually gonna be a bad thing. Yeah, <laughs> I know. With the fight, like eight extra things for no reason. That would be oh, that would be something. Uh, but Maeda here um, is trying again to, you know, take the science approach, uh, and, and he basically tells us some things that you know do become very important later on. But right now we're kind of in the point where we're still trying to track Eve down, and we're still looking for answers. Now that we have Maeda, the answers are coming a little bit quicker, um, more quickly rather. But the the, the big issue is that Eve still is kind of one step ahead of the gang, the, the Scooby-Doo team here. And <laughs> we, you know, constantly pursue her. But we're starting to see more now of the, the elements of kind of Aya's backstory and why she is the way that she is, why, you know, you know, they're like, oh, you know, she has these resistant genes. And we find out a little bit more about why. Not a ton um, in this next section here. So this is kind of like a, a backstory disposition day on, on Aya. And it's... In my opinion, one of my favorite days. The music in the hospital is excellent. Yeah, story-wise, this day is great. This is probably my least favorite day of the speed run, oh, though, because yeah, yeah, it yeah. probably has, like, the biggest... Well, I don't know. Day five is just long enough, so it makes a big difference. But for me, day four always has, like, the biggest swing and implication if yeah. a run is going to be good or not. Totally agree. Oh, yeah. I mean, especially back in the day. <laughs> I mean, mm. but, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it was literally a reset point for a long time, and um, now less so. But it, yeah, the uh, repeat encounters that RJ mentioned earlier, there's some here, obviously, and they're not worth nearly as much EXP as they are later. So typically, you'd rather take those. Um, and there's just a lot of moving around. The enemies here kind of stink as well. You know, they poison, they knock back, they slow. You know, if, if day five was like split right in half, like right after Centipede, I feel like it would be like an amazing, those would be like day five, six, and seven, I guess. Yeah. Like really good. You know what I mean? That would be great. Because yeah, day five is just too long. So right now we kind of have a little bit of running around to do before anything really interesting happens in day four. So if we have any announcements or anything to talk about, this would be a pretty good time. Oh, and we definitely do. You guys are getting a lot of love in the donations. I love to hear it. Yep. We have a $20 donation from Kios Little Monster. $5 for each of the handsome homies I see on screen. <laughs> <laughs> great to see this run getting a shot and amazed to see all the changes that have been made to it. Keep up the great work, y'all. Thanks so much, Kios. Uh, a good friend of ours. Love you, Kios. 
We also have a $51 donation from Kanban Meow. Absolutely loving this showcase of an amazing run for an amazing game. Let's hit 8K, 8K before this run ends. And if we're all feeling the burn, we might be able to hit that nine. Incentive goes to Palmer's Choice for Blue Dragon. Ooh. I, mean, I think all the Blue Dragon incentives are met. Um, what is your incentive for this? Uh, it was just to get to name Aya. So oh, yeah. is there something after Blue Dragon that we're working towards? Well, let me go ahead and take a look. But I mean, if you want to make the run a little biased, I don't know how the Blue Dragon run works, but you can still uh, put it to the choose controlled character. Because that's just a run and donation. Sure, and you said it was 51, right? Uh, yes. Yeah, let's do that one on Shu then. That would be stellar. Because I, I think that means Shu is winning by a dollar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it would be nice. And he's just the regular <laughs> character. So now they're going to have to donate. Otherwise, you're just going to see the normal character. <laughs> <laughs> So here we have um, this, you know, uh, little girl who again is is making a reappearance there, and um, the uh, we don't really get told a lot about her up until this point. She just kind of makes this weird little giggle noise huh? or whatever, you know. <laughs> and then she's really good. And then she like runs off, um, and and that's that. And, but Aya seems to immediately recognize her, right? Um, and I believe she says her name is Maya, which. <laughs> Incredible. Yeah. Just, <laughs> just mm -hmm. really creative. Um. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we actually get to fight something at this point in time. I actually hate this fight. Yeah, it's terrible. Oh, this but, fight sucks. Yeah, the, uh, the, the types of enemies we were talking about here. Um, oh, great job. It doesn't help that you can get poisoned here. Dude, RJ's, oh my gosh, excellent job, dude. So his positioning there, uh, the way he was doing that was actually preventing, um, so these little creatures that you're seeing push the green goo on the ground, ground, they can only do that if they're a certain distance from you. So by RJ standing on the opposite side of that uh, more translucent enemy, it was actually stopping those bees from being able to get close enough to do that move. And then once they're not able to get close enough, they'll skip that turn, they'll repath, and they'll try to do it again. And he actually managed to have them skip it twice, which is really, really has perfect um, positioning there from RJ as well as a, uh, you know, some, some, some good RNG. So, you know, th things are looking up, man. <laughs> I'm gonna... Yeah, I know. We're on the up and up right now. And ideally, you want to uh, maybe kill the fly things before the jelly thing. Because these, these jelly things are basically... I don't, they're not like harmless, yeah, but like free heals. <laughs> yeah, they just, they do very minimal damage and then they poison you. Like they just don't really do enough damage to ever threaten killing you. Everything else, sure. But <laughs> yeah, they're good enemies to um, utilize. Like he's going to be able to leverage here. Ooh, I don't know. Uh, if your HP is, you might instantly heal in the next fight. Um, but those little jellies are nice things to kind of bump into a little bit to, cause you know you can take like 10, 18 damage from them and maybe manipulate the healing. Nice skip. Wow. I think my favorite skip for the day, cause it's the last time we'll use a, if you get it is the oh, last true. time we'll use a rate of fire five on a fight. Cause we're about to pick up a new gun uh, in a chest that I refer to as the meme or the dream. <laughs> Probably the most important thing, because it's the only gun pickup we do that is random between two options. We're not going to pick it up right away. We're going to, it's, it's in that chest right to the left, but we make a detour for an offense that's behind us now. So we have to, we have to wait a little bit longer, but it could either be an M10 or a micro Uzi, and we really want the micro Uzi because it's a better gun. It's bad for everyone's ears, but it's good for the game. And then we got an offense nice. plus two there, so that's good. Oh, yes. Please give us the Uzi. Oh. No. All the chat, their ears, you know, are going to stay intact. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, yeah. We're, we are probably going to heal, like, right away. 
That's okay. This thing, this thing is pretty non-threatening. So, um, oh, I forgot to use my offenses. That's okay. We'll use them after this. Yeah, RJ is <laughs> that's, that's seven fine. damage. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, oh, oh, nice. Oh my goodness. Uh, so again, that is a random chance. Um, if it eliminates the first target that the gun shooting, my goodness. Hmm. Wow. Um, it doesn't move targets to the other because you remember the gun is randomly targeted. Hey, we shot it once. You were you kind of at the disposal of the... Uh, oh, God. Yeah, random targeting is sometimes giveth and taketh away. <laughs> Because those enemies have that random ball on the front of it, and it keeps respawning no matter how many times you kill them. Yeah, I believe that uh, you can actually get a super tool if you kill a hundred of those before you kill the mixed man. <laughs> so if anybody's ever interested in doing that, man, wait till they find out I'm lying and I'm just wasting their time. <laughs> <laughs> They'll never I'm, know. I'm, I'm just kidding, guys. It really is a thing, though. Really, I swear. So all the while we've been running around here trying to collect fuses to replace this fuse breaker before we knew we needed to replace it. I just like the way she puts yeah. the fuses. She just does a complete spin the wrong way yeah. for no reason. 360 no scopes. Yeah, yeah she 360 <laughs> no scope through that fuse in yeah. there. <laughs> yeah, as we know, fuse is very durable, not fragile. Yeah. <laughs> this is my least favorite screen in the whole game. Uh, because for some reason the d-pad's like almost inverted yeah the this hallway versus the hallway upstairs that we're literally going to are reversed directionally now now there's two ghost kids uh, I, I don't know what's going on maya and me, me? question mark Ooh. is that me what <laughs> I hate when that happens. Yeah, I hate when I see me. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there is one good thing about the M10 is that its range is better than the micro Uzi. So screens like this are actually probably a little better with the M10. Because the benefit of getting the M10 versus the micro Uzi is not seen in this day particularly. So having the longer range is actually kind of nice. Look at that. Yeah, that's one thing those poison pod guys are good for is they can drop a lot of ammo. Now they can drop cure peas as well, which stinks, but they're sometimes good for some ammo. So all of these screens that RJ is currently traversing right now, remember the random encounter rule. Um, and once again, there's a cancel of the turn right there. Excellent job. Um, the the issue with this, any time that you, uh, the, nice. The random encounters are based on any time you traverse across a screen where there's a guaranteed fight, and then you have to come back across that screen. I think there's 15 screens we go. Uh, you, you're gonna cross twice, and and one you do three times. Yeah, the museum, mm -hmm. um, something like that, so close to that. And um, so in the every time you come back across it, it reduces it by half, roughly. So RJ now has one more room after this, and then he's gotta you know naturally backtrack all of them. So all three of these rooms are potential refights that he might have to do. Uh, so let's fingers crossed that you know none of them pop up. That would be cool. I mean, you've taken what two? Of three? So uh, two, yeah, two of three so far. We got both in day three and not the, the only one in here so far we didn't get. So let's stand over here. Nope. Okay, cool. Nice. Yeah, um, same thing with the mixed man, the guy who puts the balls and slows you. I mean, those are like two of our least favorite things, slowing and, and extra targets. <laughs> you know, because yeah. that's out. Uh, and then these guys do something similar. The green goo will slow you similarly to uh, how the mixed men do. I think it's called... Uh, stiffness. Stiffness, stiffness. Yeah. yeah. And the, a fun thing this game likes to do is they don't like to give you the things that can cure these effects until you after you fight it one. Time. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So like, like the yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, nah, that's cool. I was just gonna say like so like the first I think your M we can get is from the first mixed man. I mean, you could probably pick them up in chests or something. I, that's what I was just about to ask. I, I don't know. I was. I, I wonder if you can get them earlier than that. I really don't. That's a yeah, question. I'm not actually sure about that. But at least as far as the run is concerned and is a big thing for day five, is you don't get the curative items you need until you fight them at least once. So here we go as Palmers, and we go back through the gauntlet. It would be really nice to not fight anything. Oh for three, baby, let's get it. This is pretty incon- oh, I don't worry about that. <laughs> Uh, well, there's one. Oh, no, that's not good. Like you were saying, there's not it's not enough experience to guarantee that by the end we hit the level we're trying to hit. So 
getting these fights is almost completely useless. The only thing that you can get from these is have haste for the boss of this day, but you really don't need that at all. It could help you out if you get bad movement from the boss in particular. But more often than not, it's not particularly... I'm, I'm, I'm like standing in the spot like I'm here the first time. Yeah. But it's per, more often than not, it's not exactly useful to have haste Those now. Good drops. good drops, though. Let's yeah, go. the lack of curatives is going to be nice, too. Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not talking about it. Yeah, this is actually... <laughs> this is... Of all of the refights to get, this one's like the least problematic because yeah, yeah, these yeah. things all die in one turn. Yeah, those guys are very chill. They're chill for sure. The screen before and after, not chill. Yeah, not this screen's like the worst. Oh my goodness. All right, that's it. I've seen enough. All right, guys. <laughs> Wrap it up. <laughs> Great RPG <laughs> limit break, everyone. I've seen enough. So my man here, just to give you an example, uh, there are 50, he has had six 50-50s and five of them he has lost. So <laughs> I'll just leave you with that. Classic marathon <laughs> Yeah, exactly. After Shiva went perfect, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Still no curatives, though. So in the long run, we're going to be we're probably pretty set on ammo for a while. I'll have to check my health. We did just pop one of the heals, but we had to fight. We get to fight the mother goo blob thing <laughs> in the next room we're going to go into. And it's actually an extremely scary version. She's so cracked. The, she is, yeah. the, little, the little ones are not threatening. The big one, really scary, and I have died to it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yep. Easily, yeah. Sometimes you're like, I'm about to dodge it. Nope. <laughs> nope. No, you're not even close. It's so biz bizarre. Yeah, we should be okay. Uh, I'm about to dodge this, and then you get hit twice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So as you can see, very large goo, and uh, you're gonna notice it has a crunch berry inside of it. <laughs> I think that's a boo berry. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, naturally. There we go. Didn't... Oh, that was pretty good, yeah. I, and it, um, one thing that we didn't really mention that you know, um, you know, just as people who speedrun the game, it's something that's harder for us to kind of remember that we're doing. Uh, but RJ is ending every single fight as close to the transition of the next screen as possible so that he doesn't have to then, you know, once the fight ends and you kind of deload from that fight, that you don't have to then move further. Um, so, you know, right there, he baited it up to the top where he knew he could do two instances of damage or, or like a shot of damage. And then he came to the bottom so he would do the second instance of damage and kill it right next to where he needed to be. So, um, you know, those are kind of things that are going on under the hood. You might not really see or appreciate that I wanted to uh, draw a little attention to because it is, you know, those are stuff that he's actively managing movement and positionally. Pretty sick elevator. You can only go to the basement, the lobby, or the 13th floor. <laughs> <laughs> this fight's particularly annoying, too. We want to hopefully shoot the mixed man, which we didn't. But luckily, he tried to throw it out. All right, there we go. Because now what I'm going to do is I'm going to use it for the first time. We're going to see a move called energy shot and it'll help us get rid of this mix man because with all of the things there's four things that could be targeted right now we're getting rid of two of them with this energy shot the managing shooting these little jelly guys is much better yeah, and that's optimistic i mean sometimes you can have five six balls on the screen you know it gets, yeah. it gets really out of hand what what a dreadful enemy either slows you or just releases target. new targets yeah, yeah, into the, the field worst. He is the he is quite literally like the enemy of the speedrun, and they're ugly. I mean, they're you know they're not even cool looking. Yeah. And <laughs> yeah, they make me feel bad looking. Yeah, at them. I'm like, what is that? Like, yeah, it feels if it, if I had to listen to it, then the noises it would make would not be good. You know what I mean? <laughs> it's true. And we get to fight three of them in a row. For some reason, well, leave me alone. Oh my god. <laughs> Hey, yeah, that's not bad. Yeah, honestly, if we had gotten any crits on the first turn, I think it would have I would have died. We well, got a med one there. We could have taken that, but we really don't want med ones. Honestly, at this point, we don't really want any more med twos. We probably have enough, but um, definitely don't need med ones anymore. There we go. Last fight with the mixed man. That guy got destroyed. <laughs> Release the hounds. Yeah. Under damage on the ball. 
Yeah, there we All go. Right. There we go. Well, whatever. We got to discard a whole bunch of stuff anyway, so yeah. just take it. We get to talk to these two files and learn a little bit about uh, what's going on here. But for some reason, this folder gives you a junk. <laughs> like just it makes sense. Yeah, and it's weird because it's like, oh, look, the folder's about, like, things that I went through as a child. And at the end of it, it's like, it's like junk. It's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is what we think of your life. <laughs> yeah, what the heck? And I like how, like, these, what is it, like, cryogenic chambers are just, like, tipped over. Um... So story-wise, what happens here is, uh, as RJ alluded to, uh, oh, 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 I forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we don't talk about it. Yeah, I really mm -hmm. forgot about those. Um, the yeah. So what he's alluding to is, is, we're reading these files, and essentially, the game is explaining kind of the connection of this ghost girl that you saw, or at least kind of hinting at it, um, and. You know, Aya is kind of in the mindset of like, oh, it's just more questions. What's going on? How come I don't understand me? You know, and it, so she's kind of having that inner turmoil. Meanwhile, the Air Force is like, all right, we've seen enough. <laughs> Send in more boats. <laughs> yeah, they're like, <laughs> shoot it with rockets. <laughs> Surprisingly, they do this a lot of times. Yeah, you'd think after the first rocket in the middle of the city that they're like, no, that's clearly not going to work. <laughs> So they are uh, quite literally flying. <laughs> what's that car yeah, doing there? Who is, is still here? There? Yeah, yeah, that taxi driver is getting his bag. You know what I'm saying? Like, that was probably he, Clamp he, trying to go to the office. He's a hard worker, dude. <laughs> My man does not miss work. <laughs> um, but yeah, they just ir pretty irresponsibly just flying uh, fighter jets, you know, down the streets of the city. Um, which you gotta imagine is probably one of the last resort choices. <laughs> um, but it's only day three, so. <laughs> All right, there we're good. As long as Spider Woman here doesn't move backwards. Oh, oh, I didn't know we were loading there. I thought. Oh yeah, I didn't. I tried to switch the gun back up to reload it. Basically, we just don't want super punch out Spider Woman here. Should go to the next phase. Cycle. Yeah. But the fun thing about the second phase, it'll always start with a swipe attack. So you just hold right. You'll always avoid it. But in this phase, you start doing a lot more damage, too. I guess it's not a lot, but it's more for some reason. I don't know why. But you usually end it after this turn. Should be dead. Nice, because the screen is more zoomed in. The bullets don't have to travel as far. Yeah. That's true. They keep up a better velocity. Good point. Don't want that gun. Yeah, so the, um, the ceiling just caves in there, <laughs> which is important, because um, you get left next to this giant hole in the ground, and then the game is like, hurry! Figure out how to get off this roof. <laughs> and if you don't figure it out fast enough, you lose. Like, the game is over. Quite literally, you, that's it. Um, so hopefully you saved. <laughs> so <laughs> thankfully, RJ knows the direction, I hope. So yeah, we're, well, we're, maybe. We'll but, see. but casually, I mean, I've watched many a streams where people are like, what the heck? And they just sit there and not even, because it's not even like 10, 9, 8. You just stand there, you know, and you're like, oh, what's happening? <laughs> you just hear yeah. impending jet landing yeah, onto yeah. this building. You're like, where do I go? It's okay. really, it's really like nerve wracking. I, I I don't think I've actually watched a single person play this game casually that knew where to go the first time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and you really don't have enough time to choose multiple places. No, like if you, you don't wrong. get it right, you lose. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's uh, punishing. If you're going to play casually, save a lot, please. <laughs> Uh, because that's a, that's a save revives won't bail you out of. Uh, yeah. So you're just running, you know where to go, but I the gotta, jet sounds just get louder. The snow footprints, though, they sound just like walking in snow. Yeah. I don't know why. This game nails it. It's like the one thing that it's like, that's right. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> These footprints. Yeah, the, the, man, that's good. It's like a <laughs> little, little crunch noise, you know? She does the whole action movie. I'm not looking at the explosion. It, it's like the end of the Matrix. <laughs> yeah, exactly. For some reason, Spider-Woman is still just chilling in the hospital down a couple floors. And as most mothers do, she uh, throws a baby at you for good, no for good measure. You need just like one crit. Yeah, if RJ had gotten a single crit there, he would have actually ended that fight on a uh, in just that one turn. But 
Alas. Yeah. What are you going to do? Alas. <laughs> Nothing we've seen so far had uh, given us the idea that that was going to happen, so. <laughs> it is one in one dollar. <laughs> It's a genius strategy, honestly. Yeah, yeah, that's great. So the, um, yeah, I mean, day four is is uh, is over now. I said day three earlier. This is day four. Day four is over now, mm -hmm. and um, my man RJ here played it phenomenally. Um, he's really making it look a lot easier. Like, we haven't seen any, like, major, uh, I mean, it's gotten tight, but there's no, like, nothing has been bad enough for us to be like, oh, well, you know, so excellent showing so far. Keep this energy going. Honestly, for how wacky things have gotten and we haven't died a single time, I'm almost saying that we're sort of blessed. Yeah, yeah. Ooh, ooh. The clamp? The clamp I, blessed? I think we might be blessed. That's crazy to say because it hasn't felt very blessed. No, so I mean, there's been plenty uh, of things that have just been terrible. Yeah, but it's, uh, it's, a, it's a good fun run. And my, my man here is killing it. Um, once again, though, just to stick true to the story, you're going to have... Um, you're going to have Aya and uh, Parasite Eve give you just a, a good <laughs> amount of disposition here at the end. Just some story, some extra lines of text to mash through. Maeda is constantly running places. Like, homie just needs to relax, you know? He just needs to go somewhere like and be there. Edge. Yeah. I, my favorite Maeda thing is when you're in the Soho apartment and he leaves Aya to, like, sleep for the night. He just goes and sleeps on the sidewalk yeah, outside. Yeah, exactly. There's a couch in the room. Like, I know it's grody. The whole room is disgusting. Yeah, yeah. But... He, he thought the outside was a better option. <laughs> yeah. It's because yeah. the poor ventilation. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No. That's true, yeah. He was worried about, like, yeah, carbon brought, monoxide I'm, poisoning. I brought this fire in here to keep you warm, <laughs> but now I can't breathe, so I'm going to go outside. <laughs> uh, Daniel's suit stays crisp, though. I don't know if he gets it dry clean. I don't know what the situation. He might have 10 extra suits. I don't know, but... Never catch him lacking, that's for sure. He's always looking stellar. Honestly, everybody in this game has a nice outfit. That they never change. I just can't believe that Aya's sleeves are so long and her, the rest of the, like it's a jacket that ends like here and then the sleeves end like down here, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, we got a couple fights that aren't particularly noteworthy, if there's anything to talk about. Yeah, we got a couple more donations here. We have $25 from Eyes on B. Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Love seeing this game. You all are the best. Big Facts, B, another good friend of ours. We also have a $10 donation from RP Priya. Palmer and RJ are killing it. I'd love to see them co-stream and race this game in December. <laughs> Palmer, you like spontaneous incentives. Parasite Eve race at 8100 what, 8100 That's like $45. <laughs> Priya is cooking the books. Yeah, what the heck? <laughs> Priya, also a good friend. Yeah, thank you so Thanks much. Thanks so much, everybody. We also have $10 from Calaroni. First time donating, because this is the first time I've actually managed to catch this marathon live. Have a great week, everyone. Thank you so much. Stay away from me. Please, something die. <laughs> There's a lot of shooting and yeah. not a lot of things dying here. Really? I don't think I've ever shimmied this far down the screen before. <laughs> yeah, the, um, you know, still, even though we've made things a little bit better with the guns and the damage and the amount of bullets and what have you, it can still be kind of difficult. Um, you know, especially on certain screens that look like, sometimes the depth in this game is not really accurate and it, the screen is much longer or deeper than it realizes. Mm -hmm. Um, there's actually a few in this next area you'll see that it's really bad, but that is a, a like right there you can, sp he spread out damage, he hit like everything the perfect amount of times to where nothing was dead, everything was just close to it. And now, um, you know, Maeda is like, I think we need to go down here into the sewer. But first, take this. Yeah. Have Here's, this charm. <laughs> Here's this charm. I like to imagine it as like a bracelet that every few so often he's like, here's the next one. <laughs> it's like a Pandora. <laughs> Just like clips it on. <laughs> yeah, it's like, thank you. This next fight coming up is like honestly my least favorite fight in the game. Maybe even more so than most of the bosses. This fight is obnoxious sometimes. I actually just hate this whole area. Yeah, I mean, the sewers is just garbage. Okay, double fire is good. Okay, that's nice. that's pretty nice. They're gonna do something, I know it. There we go. So what they're doing there, they're shooting the sonar attack and what it is is it causes darkness. Darkness is not cool at all. 
Uh, it reduces the um, range I can shoot to basically nothing. It's almost impossible to shoot anything. Uh, so, and you you can't cure anything in that first instance of that fight. So you just wait it out. It takes like 30 seconds. It's a long it's time. Awful. Yeah, as Ar RJ mentioned earlier, you only get the curatives after you've defeated the enemy that applies the status. So, yeah, I mean, there's no solution there. <laughs> you just stand. So now we can do something about it if this happens to go. There we go. That was actually really nice. You're getting cure Ds for days, which is, uh, you know, not a terrible thing to have at least a couple of. But Yeah. So I t we took the three from the first fight. Nice. Yay. What is that? Six out of eight? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> But <laughs> if we were going to skip one thing, that's the that one. is the one. Because that is arguably like just the worst non-boss fight that you could possibly get. But it's optional, so I don't say it's my least favorite. Yeah, that's six for nine now. But yeah, that, uh, that what is it, two snakes and two bats? Right? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's terrible. It's, it's Status effects for days. It's awful. And you, there's no immunity to curing a status effect. Like, as soon as you cure it, you could get hit by the very next attack and be poisoned again. Yeah, or it, blinded again. It's funny you mention that, because if you look at the items, they actually say something about, like, makes you more resistant to this. Yeah. But that is not true. Oh, yeah, that's yeah, not that's, true. That's a lie. You can also flee in this game. I don't know, that's another thing yeah. to do. You, you can tell how well it works by the fact that we haven't even talked about it <laughs> until an hour and 45 minutes into the uh, run. The fact that I just remembered that, you know, is, yeah. I had been speedrunning the game for like at least a year and a half or something, I think, when I was like, what is this? And I, had, and I was like, flee! <laughs> I was like, oh, it's just terrible, that's why. Here we go. I think this is the goo moment where she just yells Lorraine at it. Or talks about <laughs> Lorraine. <laughs> Like, there's not, you know, hundreds of other people in it. <laughs> but honestly, that sewer segment was probably as smooth as it'll ever go. Yeah, that was clean. Um, good fights, no blinds. Get, you know, drops yeah. for cure Ds, but it is what it is. And then the the bat on the bridge was a one and done, which is, oh, yeah. you know, it's, we're on the, things are looking up for us, man. Basically, if you're at a certain point with your PB in this game and you get into the sewers with that first bad fight and they blind you, your run is over. Yeah, or you take that, that optional fight. That's like the run's dead. Yeah, yeah, it's just dead. So this this segment is particularly brutal. Yeah, unfortunately, that, uh, that two snake, two uh, bat fight doesn't come up a ton, but, I mean, it can take... 60, 90 seconds sometimes. You know, yeah, it could be like 20 bad. if you're super lucky, or yeah. it could be like literally it, it a minute and a half. It could be really hand. bad, yeah. Oh, oh, I got it. I was like, I thought I missed. I always liked this part because we turned this uh, pump on to like do this cutscene, and then as soon as this cutscene's over, we immediately turn it off. It's just like the most extra thing they could have made you do for. I mean, it, 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 there's a reason for it in the game, but it's just, like, so insignificant feeling to actually do. Yeah, I mean, it, they did it just to be annoying. Yeah, like, it's like a all. Resident Evil puzzle. Because if you don't turn it off, you go out this door, and then you're like, oh, I can't cross because all the goo's in my way. And then you got to go back in, turn it off, and you're good. But, like, I mean, all that did was exist to make people walk out the door and go, oh, that's annoying. And go back, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, that... <laughs> And it also feels like it's one of the most sensitive menus. Like, you click it, and it's so responsive that you can't back out of it. So if you go into turn, you can keep turning the yeah, pumps yeah, on, yeah. even though they're already on. It's just an annoying thing all around. Yeah, and there's a weird, like, amount of lag buffer to it. So while you're watching the scene, you can actually hit X, like, almost a little early, so that when the scene ends, you're already ready to turn it off. But... Yeah, it's just there's a again there's a lot of nuance under the hood that unless you've got your hands on the on the controller it's a little hard to to appreciate sometimes. So I made a slight little detour. It's not usually very common even in a marathon to pick up the range there, but it can end up helping. Oh, hey, nice. nice. Yeah, I should take it. That's probably smart. Yeah, I agree. I did it by accident, though, so if I did what I wanted to, I wouldn't have it. We'll just keep that in mind. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> I got to be true to myself. <laughs> uh, heal. Not terrible on... Um... Yeah, we have a lot of medicine. Yeah, we should be pretty okay. 
This is probably my least favorite fight in the game. There's just a lot that can be very painful just, about yeah, this. It's just like, oh, well, my ATB was bad. <laughs> you know, or, you know. can't see. Nice. Oh. That, that poison does a ton of damage, and it's very difficult to dodge. My man RJ made it look like light work, but it's not that easy. I watched a lot of uh, Barry Sanders footage before I came here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, they're doing it again! They're gonna make me look stupid on TV! Oh! oh right before he splits. Oh, splits. what? Oh, um, nice, you still got some damage off. But look how much damage this uh, poison tick does that you're, you're watching here. Uh, yeah, that one. So he's at 196, and just a single tick is like a chunk of his HP. So we need to get rid of something right away. 38. <laughs> yeah, I know. It's, it's absolutely oh. maddening. And then you get the, um, yeah, and then you get those guys who, they're not slouches. Like, they hit for quite a bit of damage. And, you know, RJ mentioned earlier that range is useful because, like, sometimes in this fight, you can stand right in the middle and just miss everything. Like, you, you're not close enough to hit anything. I think that's the first time I've ever literally just dodged every attack like that. <laughs> He's got fancy feet out here today, guys. Mm -hmm. All right, good. Something else died. Stay, yeah. away, stay away from me. So it's a little bit better now um, that he's got them right next to each other. Well, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> I love this game. Hey! Hey, nice. Else, uh, we take those. Stay away from me. Oh, he got me. That's okay. There you go. Hey, it's it's. We still have... Um, you got an offense as well? Yeah, no, that's hey, a pretty dude, good job. That's not bad. You want to know what's funny? Oh, I did use, I did use the, the range. I was like, I don't think I even took the range. <laughs> I used the I did it. I picked oh it up and didn't even God. use it. Let's go. Oh, I didn't need Happy it. Happy surprises. <laughs> uh, so we just want those stats. Now, if this was um, the micro Uzi, RJ would have put ice bullets on it, and it would have made this really kss, 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 really <laughs> awful noise every time it <laughs> Every it, time. Every time it shoots, yeah. Um, but he didn't want to do he didn't want to do y'all like that. So he actually, um, believe it or not, when this game is run, and uh, I think the second limit or the second limit break, maybe it was the third. I can't remember. Um, but the first time Parasite Eve was running limit break, um, the route was slightly different. But they also reset for Uzi. So my man RJ here is actually going to look to finish the only run ever done at limit break that's used uh, the M10. The only that's a big deal. Yeah. The M10 is, you know, people, it's unequivocally worse. You know what I mean? Yeah. My man is out here doing it. We didn't really talk about the Uzi, why it's better, because it get just it. makes me sad <laughs> to think about. But, you know, the difference between getting the Uzi could be like anywhere from like 90 to two minutes of time save between the two guns, depending on damage rolls and depending on this ability that we can't get on the M10 called Quick Draw. Which gives you, it's an 80% chance to start any fight with a full ATB, which we keep talking about ATB position. It's invaluable. What? Wow. This gun has really good range, by the way. Yeah, so again, <laughs> right there, I think that there's got to be a depth issue. Like, I don't understand. Yeah, you there was right. something going on. There was something there. fishy. Yeah, you're right on top of them. Uh, so again, that's another refight. So I think you are, uh, I haven't, uh, let, me, let, me, let me redo. Six out of eight when you got here. I think we're at 7 of 10. Yep. That's pretty good, right? Well, <laughs> yep, 7 of 10, yeah, I think. That's, yeah, not good at all, actually, yeah. <laughs> That's pretty bad. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, now that we're uh, done with the centipede, day five is an incredibly long split. Yeah. Uh, but now that we're here, we're kind of like in... Almost like the home stretch of yeah, the run. Yeah, this is chill territory. You know, I like museum. This is a long home stretch. Like this, the museum split alone before we have the end game is still like a fifty-ish minute split. So we're not by any means. <laughs> that scene always cracks me up. She's walking in and you just see like this white lab coat peeking at her, and she's like, "Who's there?" And he's just gone. And she's like, "Well, I better continue looking through this place." <laughs> yeah. Who was that guy yeah. in the lab coat? Who we haven't seen anyone in a yeah. lab coat. Oh my goodness! At this very location. <laughs> very pronounced footsteps. They're like, what could we do for sound here? I could, you know, maybe make some creepy noises. Now let's just listen to her run. So all of these, you see those little gold boxes, like right, he just passed right there. There's one in the top right corner of the screen currently, right above where RJ's standing now. And uh, those are like trivia boxes. So if you click on those, they're gonna ask you various uh, trivia questions. Some of them are gonna be like about, like the very first one asks like, just to count how many things are in the room you're in. Uh, but some of them are more extreme, they're like, 
who was the first, you know, person, blah, 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 you know, it's like actual chemistry questions and stuff. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> Uh, but they give you a random reward if you answer them correctly. Sometimes it's a, another revive or like a medicine four or ammo or whatever. Um, so if, yeah, if you're ever feeling like you know, you're a trivia champ, have at it. Uh, so these little green guys you're seeing here, um, they, they're pretty much like the birds of the, of the back half of the run. Uh, they drop a lot of junk. They're very, very annoying uh, because they they move, they reposition a lot like birds do. So they can sometimes just pop out of your range. And that little bit of dialogue from Aya there is pretty funny. She's like dinosaurs, basically, that she's fighting. Not like she didn't just kill a giant scorpion and centipede. <laughs> Or, or it's like, you're at a dinosaur museum, dog. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you were going to see the... anything, that's what yeah, you were going to see heck? here. Like, why is there a big centipede in the, the subway? I can't believe there's dinosaurs at this dinosaur museum. I am getting pounded by these little green. Yeah, yeah, they, uh, they are froggy. They uh, hop around a ton, and they can stun lock you. Sometimes they'll all jump on top of you, and they'll hit you one at a time. You're like, ugh, ugh, ugh. <laughs> Yeah, because at least unlike the crows, they actually do significant damage. Yeah. They can easily burn through your medicine stashes. I would say the biggest enemy where you really notice the difference of not having frost bullets versus having them are these enemies right here. Because the good thing about frost bullets is the blue dinosaurs and these armadillos are all weak to frost, and you fight a lot of them. But these things take quite a bit of damage without it. We're, our crits are doing like 20 less damage to them. It's not going too bad though. They're being pretty. These uh, the enemies he's fighting right here, these little uh, roly polies. Uh, armadillos, as we call them, they, um, they're they kind of, as you can see here, RJ's taking advantage of kind of uh, abusing their pathing. Like you can, you can make them, they're always going to jump up and then roll in a straight line like that. So if you can kind of get bait them into certain directions, you can then sidestep and, and have them position themselves for you. There's a good fight reskip. Nice. So I did get a full cure that I don't want. Yeah. With the two revives, I want to make sure I ditch anything I really don't need. Yeah, especially uh, at this point. There's a the hospital has a, does a a good job of just filling your inventory with junk, like just various cures and low medicines and things like that. And then sometimes if you're not careful, you get the centipede and like you're like, oh, I have five medicine ones, and that's not going to be good enough. Uh, so RJ was intelligent in how he was picking up like what what level tier medicines as he mentioned earlier and that had a lot to do with you know just how easy it was to get through the you know up to this point. And you would think something called a full cure would actually be pretty useful but it's <laughs> not at all. It's yeah. completely worthless to us cuz I guess something we I don't know if we actually really touched on but most of the or all of the curative items you get you don't use them outside of battle as soon as you're done a battle the status you have goes away. So you use them during the fights. It just like it makes no sense to cure pretty much anything other than darkness in that one instance. And there is another enemy, I guess, uh, in here that can uh, cause darkness with one of its moves. Oof. The um, um, one thing that is unique about the uh, museum is that these fights, while they are guaranteed, the the composition of what you actually end up fighting is not. Uh, so this, there's like usually one of uh, two variations for, for certain rooms. If they do have a variation, there's usually one of two. Uh, and this is one of, I believe it's a single raptor otherwise. And then uh, the screen above would be a single raptor instead of two. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm wrong about this. I can't remember that one. Exactly. Maybe it's a single armadillo. It's been a minute. Um, this one can be, you know, two different things as well. Uh, this is the more common one. I think, yeah, I think the other variation is just three green dinosaurs. Oh, is that what it is? I believe so. Which at least, uh, you know, getting an armadillo gives us more experience out of the fight. Yeah. 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 If I had to choose, definitely give me the armadillos. Uh, they drop medicine fours quite often, and a lot of ammo sometimes. Yeah, you'll see like the blue dinosaurs and the. Oh, I took all that. Oops. I was thinking. I was talking about the blue dinosaurs and the armadillos. They take, uh, or they drop ammo clips plus 15 a lot. 
back here anymore. Where's the other one? There it is. Oh my gosh. And, and then we, uh, you know, the Cure Fours are a thing. They're beefy. <laughs> they're, yeah. they're chunky heels. And then, interesting enough, like, we'll fight a couple of pterodactyls in here, but this one is special in that I think it gives more experience than all the other ones, and it drops specifically a Med 4, whereas all the other ones will only drop either Med 3s or clips of ammo. Good fight. So there's one Medicine 4, he's gonna pick one up from the chest here, so all of a sudden, like, our healing game gets, like, really potent. This green is yep. has the worst alternate Fingers version of crossed. it. Yay. Yay! Something went right. Let's get <laughs> it. Let's get it. So you either could fight one pterodactyl or you could fight three green dinosaurs and one blue one. Yeah. I just sat there and ate that. You can either fight this one enemy or four enemies that jump <laughs> yeah, all that around. Don't this stand huge next to screen. each other. <laughs> yeah, it's so bad. It's so bad when that happens. Oh, this, is, uh, this could be a pterodactyl as well. So I'm not sure that they're actually 50-50s or not. I mean, yeah. I, I haven't like tested it. I feel like I see one variation, typically a little bit more. Um, that could, that's purely anecdotal. I'm not 100% sure. Um, but like RJ mentioned, usually the things in this game are, are not pure 50-50s. Um, the only few instances of that are like one of them is, is the micro Uzi box. Uh, where it's 50-50. Usually the boxes, um, and maybe the fights work the same, I'm not 100%, but um, typically the way that they work is either like a 70-30 or 80-20 split. Some of them are like 99-1. And, and then the micro Uzi is 50-50, <laughs> right? I think actual, and funny enough, there is some new information about it that the micro Uzi might be 60-40. 60-40. For the Uzi. Ugh. That would make me feel bad. But we're never, we're not, yeah, we're not really, <laughs> we're not really quite sure on the exact percentages because I think most of this information comes from the Brady guide. Of oh, it. yeah, yeah. Oh, well, in that case, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's one of those things that this game's um, actually got some unique stuff in Japanese that it doesn't have in the American game as well. So, um, yeah, there's all kinds. I, I could guarantee you there's probably more to this game than we're just not privy to yet. There's the extra darkness attack. Two, two uh, rotations on pterodactyls is perfect. That's, you're never really going to get better than that. So that's out. nice that he's hitting those. Just clear out all our twos. That's probably good enough, honestly. Um, BP. Uh, so the BP system in this game, especially in the speedrun, very, very important. Uh, so what RJ did was he used um, attack in the very, very beginning, just briefly, and then he used ATB uh, up to 31-ish, and then you switch back to attack. And, and, you know, ideally, there is some give and take to that. Um, you know, what is most statistically, mathematically ideal is a, is a better mix of ATB and damage. For but, some reason, the scorpion just isn't moving. Yeah, I, I wasn't going to say nothing, bro. <laughs> He's attacking the empty space over here. Oh, oh man, why? You did the only thing that could actually mess anything up. That's so not chill of him. I had to shoot, too. That's why I couldn't move. Yeah, whatever. I didn't want to use that, but... I healed all that, to my, all of that healing just to not hopefully do that, but unlucky. Yeah, that was, uh, he, he tricked us. He was like, oh, look, I'm not attacking you. And we were like, mm -hmm. cool. And then he was like, just kidding. Got yeah, here you yeah. go. <laughs> Here's my long range poison. Yeah, attack. yeah, that hits me like eight <laughs> times. Yeah. But yeah, the scorpions are kind of interesting like that. They're, they can get stuck kind of, it's not infrequent. Yeah. And I wish we could kind of figure out how to do it because I've seen on more than one occasion where one of the phases of the final boss actually will also get stuck. Oh, that'd be sweet. And it's the it's the second phase. So like if you didn't have to liberate on the second phase right away, it would probably be kind of tight. But I don't know. I can never seem to make it happen consistently. Yeah, that would be really nice. That fight still looks good. <laughs> this, this is a, uh, a little weird variation. This is either what three roly polies or a pterodactyl. And um, in the previous screen that he got, you could have had three green lizards or two green lizards. So like, I literally cannot shoot right now until I get yeah. yeah. closer. Uh, you can, but you just hear the. <laughs> yeah, you're not hitting anything. <laughs> you're just wasting ammo. And this is a screen where depth is kind of an issue. All right, not too bad. 
There was a, like a couple of seconds where the armadillo was like, I'm going to hang out all the way down here. He's like, you come get me. Yeah. <laughs> I do an attack where I roll the entire screen, but not today. Yeah. But I hate when he like turns sideways, he rolls like <laughs> side. I'm like, dude, are you serious? Come down here, man. <laughs> well, let's get rid of this guy. With the uh, offense we have on the guns now, these will die from one energy shot. I don't know what exactly is better, because they all are just kind of enemies that'll that'll fan out. Yeah, you definitely want to get rid of something, though, because yeah. two is, is, is manageable. Three, like, you always get that one that's just doing its own thing, and you're like, oh. All right. We can live with this. Okay. Dude, he is not being agreeable. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he was trying to leave. He's like, I see what you did to my friends. I'm yeah, out of here. He, he, the screen wouldn't let him leave, so he was just stuck there. <laughs> so in terms of plot, just kind of catch um, us up a little bit. We are, uh, you know, RJ has f f fantastically navigated us to this point with both revives still. I want him to That's nice. And in fact, there's actually a third revive that he could have picked up in the museum if he wanted it. Uh, bad enough, and he didn't, which should tell you just uh, yeah, he's feeling it. <laughs> um, but the uh, just plot-wise, we uh, you know we find out some information at the hospital about our backstory. Well, then we then kind of go to the sewer and we get the key, and then we she quite literally looks up and she's like, oh, the museum. Uh, so then we go to the museum and we go in here to you know hopefully find out more info. Um, but we know that Clamp and um, Aya and her childhood are somehow intermingled um, and it connects to you know, where we're at plot wise. And we're about to see a pretty cool scene there. Um, and I'll let you know, RJ explain all the guns and stuff he picked up. But uh, I don't want you to think we're not explaining the plot very well. <laughs> I just, there's just not a whole lot to explain until it's like, she killed it. <laughs> yeah. yeah you know, <laughs> she did it. <laughs> so um, yeah, I just don't want you guys to think that we're totally leaving you in the dark. It's just mitochondria. That's really all you need to know. Mm hmm. Yep. If there's one thing you take away from today, it's just mitochondria. You don't even need to know that it's the powerhouse of the cell. You just need to know mitochondria. This is a pretty cool scene. I don't know. The goo is the goo is going rogue and turning dinosaurs and back into things. He's happy. He's wagging his tail. Yeah, yeah. he's not even gooed yet though. Like that's just. That's just sheer force of will. Yeah. He's... Now he's gooed all, all gooed up. She's like, is that a T-Rex? How <laughs> unfortunate. Oh, <laughs> what is that thing? <laughs> That's a bummer. <laughs> Got two refights coming up. Obviously, I, this long screen is always a bummer. <laughs> oh, boy. <laughs> Yeah, so typically, obviously, uh, these fights, uh, well, they're not always super, super quick. Uh, you know, they're they're better to get sometimes than the like the four hospital fights or whatever, just because we're a lot more sure of the EXP we're getting here. Uh, because at some point, RJ is going to need to be a certain level in order to progress. And if you're not, it's actually a little bit harmful. Um, so occasionally, you'll end up having to take optional fights just to ensure that you're that level. I, I think at this point, RJ is probably going to be safe. <laughs> yeah, I'm not super concerned yeah. about it. At least we skipped this one. Yeah, we can take that. Because that fight's actually completely worthless. At least that other fight is good experience. Um, that fight is just more green dinosaurs. Yeah, we those, don't want any of those that. Those lizards are not the move. Here's more of your story. Read as fast as you can. <laughs> <laughs> My head is here. He can't resist the science. Yeah, he really can, dude. We're, we're, he's like risking his life constantly. He's just obsessed with that microscope. He's like, oh, I could see so much. I mean, it is a it, pretty it, cool microscope. It's like this big. You could take it with you, dude. Yeah, yeah no, you could literally. It's really, it was behind him the whole time. Yeah. He didn't even see it. You could just take it. Yeah, Clamp doesn't need it. That's that CRT is gonna have some major burning being on the same <laughs> screen the entire game. I think game. it already does. Like I, I'm pretty sure he's doing other type of work, and that's just the picture that burned in at this point. Oh, that would be elite, man. It's like you can never tell what I'm working on. <laughs> I can't either, but you can't either. 
There we go, Clamp. Now he's here. Now all the science people are here. Yeah, so sci uh, science. Clamp walks in and he's like, what are you guys doing in my science room? And she, <laughs> she pulls out her gun and is like, dude, we evacuated the city. What are you doing here? <laughs> And he's like, well, I couldn't leave my work behind. And she's like, that's exactly what you should have done. That's like quite literally what we told you to do. And then naturally, Daniel shows up, punches him. Because that's what Daniel does. <laughs> yeah, for some reason, he's trying to stab him. She, uh, Clamp is trying to stab Io with like a scalpel, which yeah. isn't really, like, he can't really see it with the way it is. Yeah. I don't actually think he's holding anything. Yeah, I don't know if there's actually a scalpel <laughs> there. I think that's just, trust me. <laughs> trust me. Yeah, bro. he has one. Yeah. <laughs> but luckily, Daniel is there to save the day from our superhero heroine. Yeah, our... Uh, you know, he, he does that the same. He punched a news reporter in the very beginning as well. So he's just a punchy guy. <laughs> but it's nice to know that you, you got him looking over your back when you need him the most. Yeah, he's, punch he's punching for you. Yeah. He's a good lad. Got some time for some more donations? Ooh, absolutely, yeah. This guy, Clamp is actually going to meet his demise here, but other than that, we're all good. Oh, yeah, Daniel and Maya to jump out a two-story building in a museum onto concrete. But, yep, go ahead. Donations, please. All right. Well, we have $10 from Geister Carl. Some parasite told me to donate. I, I hope that's correct. And we also have <laughs> another $10 from Total Nonsense. 8100 for a race? I like the way RP Priya thinks. So glad Palmer and RJ agreed to this spontaneous incentive. <laughs> all right, let's see it. I still play this game all the time, kind of. It's it's, it's up to this guy. Oh, yeah, no thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'll do it for the culture, but, you know. <laughs> we get 8,100 for a good cause. Sure, I'll bust, it, I'll bust it out one time, but don't expect it to be pretty. All right, here's the oh, room wow. we said earlier that we're going to we go through three times. Yeah. So, 150 50 evaded. And I think that it actually, well, I'm not sure. Do you have to take the fight for the reduction, for the rate to reduce? Yeah. Is that how it works? Yeah. I'll, at least, I guess that's what we assume. I don't think anybody would know for a fact. We need to, like, decompile this at some point. It's too many questions. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we know so many things about so many other things, but not this. Yeah, like, why does the Japanese game have that sweet glitch? That's so that's lame. Yeah, the Japanese game can do this armor glitch where they can just, like, infinitely restack armor, and you can just get, like, 999 armor really, really quickly. Uh, obviously, that trivializes a significant portion of the game, uh, but it makes doing the Chrysler building a single pass very, very doable. Um, yeah, well, we, have, we have more medicine than I thought. I was, I was like, this is kind of bad, but it's not too bad. We're about to fight a boss. But just for a fun fact, there's the uh, Chocobo skeletons. That's a little Easter egg. Oh, that's cool, actually. Yeah. And uh, another fun fact, this guy right here, not cool at all. This this boss is <laughs> serious. Yeah, I hate this guy. Yeah, he can do, um, like he has this little charge move that I'm sure you'll see plenty of here in a second, but he uh, it can just sometimes snipe you, like do a ton of damage. Yeah, I think the highest it hits for is like 202, and it could do it three times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You we can, only have 500. <laughs> you can get killed from this guy okay. of no fault of your own pretty quickly. So we're gonna start with an energy shot because until we can remove this faceplate, uh, it'll always do that charge attack. Once we kill, do enough damage to remove the faceplate, it'll never do the charge attack again. And that's where we want to live. Cool. Uh, let's do some maze. So uh, typically, uh, it'll do the same amount of damage every time it hits. So if you see it hit for like 200 or something on the first one, it's like, oh, I can probably heal. If you can, uh, sometimes you know ATB is not there. Right so after uh, we get the faceplate off, it pretty much exclusively only does like a jaunty stroll around the level or this electric attack. I'm stuck in its face, but uh, it's the charge attack literally only does like contact damage. Please! Oh my god! Beautiful. <laughs> So we just killed it, but we didn't. It's still here. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> and then it throws you out the window before it, it says, Ugh, and then it dies. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was learning how to talk, how yeah. unfortunate.
But for some reason, it gives us a full heal. Yeah, yeah, that doesn't make sense to me at all. But I guess they were just like, well, we're about to fight another yeah, boss. So they're just those. like, we can't have Yeah, they didn't happen. find a way to make it make sense. They just did it. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> Adrenaline. Yeah, they were like, we, you got thrown out of this window, and you healed the fool. This dinosaur that we saw revive, like, I don't know, like six minutes ago has just been wandering the museum <laughs> looking for us. It's finally here, though. Now, I've been having problems with this guy, so hopefully it's not the case today. Anyway, I knew he was going to do it, so I just ran away. Yeah, I think that uh, this fight is a... Uh, so it can get a little uh, dicey if... You find out that you're out of ammo? <sighs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, I remember one time that... Like, it, this is about where if you're on... If you're low on ammo in the route, this is about where you find out. Because this fight takes a, 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 quite a while to kind of get him all the way down. He's got a bit of HP. And, uh, yeah, you can go through you know, 60 bullets in this fight. You know, if, if it's... If he's jumping all over the place and you're missing and stuff like that, so... RJ is keeping him pretty localized. Wow, that actually... I thought I was far enough over. I guess not. So RJ's hitting him with those uh, energy shots. Just to, We're just getting out of here. Just to get as much damage as we can. <sighs> Jesus. Oh my goodness. No. The range. This is such an awkward place for it to be. Yeah, it is. Oh, this is going to hurt. Oh, no, we're good there. Okay, good. That, this, this fight's much more avoidable. And he starts to spam it more as he gets under 50% uh, health, I believe. Uh, basically, if he's going to do the little... Oh, okay, well, nice. that doesn't... We do have the revives, but normally you want them to do the fire attack like over and over again, and then this attack once thing. you get here. Yeah. Because the fire attack is actually really easy. Oh, okay, he's dead. Nice. I need to make sure we take that. So I was nice and careful. So pretty not, not really big deal, but if you get caught in the moves it could do, it does a lot of damage. He's no slouch. Uh, yep. Overzealous with my mashing. All right, there we go. End game gun comes from the T Rex, and we made a little detour at one point before we saw the T Rex cutscene. It's kind of like a secret little hallway into an elevator where we can go up to a fourth floor and grab a chest. We actually go up there and grab a tool and a shotgun, only because we want to take the burst feature from the shotgun and put it on this pistol. So now this pistol is just a really high-powered shotgun. Which we will definitely see. Oh, wow, he skipped it every time. Ooh, what's your EXP at? Let's see after this one if we get it or not. <laughs> yeah, I always kind of forget to look after. All right. Yeah, we're good. Perfect. Yeah, we're good. I don't know how. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's unfortunate. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't fight everything in the museum <laughs> yeah. for nothing. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. And a repeat encounter from the Rhino. No, I'm just kidding. That would be <laughs> He's back a third <laughs> time. 50% chance to fight the boss a second time. <laughs> he knocks you out again. Yeah, the yeah, T-Rex yeah, exactly. shows up again. <laughs> you go out the same window. There's plenty more dinosaurs. I don't know why they give up after two. Yeah, well, they like, were look like, at all of them. The, the king of dinosaurs didn't <laughs> didn't do it, so they were like, well, let's be let's be realistic here. That thing looks pretty scary, though, whatever that is. She's like, I only have fine. Yeah, what is that thing? Yeah, I don't know. It's like, I only have finite amount of goo. I can't be using it on every dinosaur. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Especially if she plans to, uh, you know, murk the city. So you're going to see here, uh, obviously, the shotgun, true to its, its shtick, is uh, doing burst damage. And so basically, the way that the burst damage works in this game is you kind of have to line it up. It's like a thin cone in front of you. Oh, I was hoping I was going to get it. That's my bad. Nice. A lot of ammo from those guys. Oh, mm -hmm. nice. So let's kind of prep for the end. That's probably good enough. BP. Ooh. BP. And 94 damage is, uh, is a lot of damage. Uh, there's not, I mean, obviously, EX weapons and stuff like that go, go pretty high, but um, for, for a single, like, first pass of the game, it, you know, that's a very potent 
gun there. And it, you used to, um, so the, the reason it's so powerful is because it has this thing called inner two. So you're actually, in, it looks like it's doing two shots of damage, but it's actually taking two separate turns. Uh, and the difference there is that what you can do is you can um, you know, menu a second time. So you could shoot with one and then heal with the other, or you know, you have a little bit more uh, maneuverability there. In the old route, um, we would have to get the micro Uzi because when we got to that gun, we would take the inner two from that and put that onto the micro Uzi. So we would essentially have a shotgun machine gun with, with two turns. <laughs> and it was really, really good, but uh, we found that the M8000 really isn't, it is pretty equal. Uh, and that gave us the ability to not have to reset to the Uzi anymore. Um, I think Primus pretty much came all up with most of that on his own. And uh, it was pretty, uh, <laughs> it was a good day for all of us. So. <laughs> Here we go. Eve's looking a little different. She's pregnant. Yeah. <laughs> She's um, she... entering her Ultimecia area, er, era. Yeah. She's pregnant with the uh, harbinger of despair and doom and all that good stuff. Yeah. And the baby comes quick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the ultimate being. Yeah. Here's Lorraine again. Yeah. Have you ever seen the uh, the, Sh the Shrek movie where they make that giant gingerbread man and they like ride on him? That's what I, <laughs> that's what I think about. <laughs> <laughs> like, bro, this is straight out of Shrek, dude. <laughs> I don't know. It's uncanny, really. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I don't know why I can't get that low pitch like laugh out of my head now. <laughs> oh, the ho oh, oh, ho. Yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> You know, so Eve knew she was in trouble there while she's waiting. So she called Lorraine to come get her, and now they're going somewhere else. Squad is rolling out. And meanwhile, Daniel and Maeda jumping out a two-story building onto just solid concrete yeah, below them. They're know, fine. They don't have superpowers, so they're <laughs> just getting beat up. Man. Like, they're <laughs> taking a beating. But really, we're entering in a extremely long dialogue scene phase so at any point in time if you have anything you'd like to say feel free to interrupt us otherwise we'll just keep rambling about whatever's happening in this game whatever we think is happening at the time it's mostly speculation yes <laughs> nobody knows yeah. well i just want to pop in and let you guys know that the choose control character for the next run blue dragon somebody sniped you palmer oh. the shoe is no longer in the lead oh we got some kluke action yep we got that so if anybody wants to change that or get kluke further ahead get your donations in now yeah and that's going to actually rotate um that incentive so like right. if if you end up getting to like disc three or something um and it's higher at that point we can you know switch so if at any point you're like i'm tired of seeing Luke or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, now now the, the military is extra involved. They're like, our planes didn't work, so what should we do? Let's get more planes. They're like, yeah, when the sky approach fails, you call the Navy. That's the <laughs> next, you know. The, uh, and here in the States, we have a very simple list <laughs> of like, this failed, this is next. The Marines and the Coast Guard are probably after this. Oh, sorry. If they're not already included in the uh, in the Air Force uh, Navy bout right here, and you would think that you know the um, you would think that the earlier escapades after the hotel, I mean the hospital section, would have maybe realized that oh, it's probably a waste of our time and, and tax <laughs> dollars. But uh, but no, they don't. Meanwhile, Aya, Daniela, and Maeda are just like driving around New York City watching this happen. <laughs> it's a nice night for a drive. Yeah, clearly. Well, Daniel will not waste an opportunity to go 75 miles an hour down yeah, New York streets. He, he loves cruising. <laughs> <laughs> Guy's going at Mach 10 at all times. They're, they're just getting blasted out of the sky. <laughs> yeah, it's... This isn't working. What do we do? Send in more planes. Shoot the missiles. It just curves the <laughs> missiles away and shoots them back at you. Like, that is, oh, my goodness. You use solar beam. Getting clowned on right now. And then when the um, and then when the military realizes that they're losing, they're like, go find Catalina, that one cop. That, <laughs> go, somebody go find her. 
there, yeah, there he goes. He just yells Lorraine again. Yeah. There are other people there. Yeah, Lorraine, stop this. She's like, you think I'm controlling this whole thing, dude? <laughs> I am the toenail. Dude, it turns out Lorraine was like Eve's secondhand <laughs> the whole time as their sidekick. This is all an elaborate scheme yeah. to get back at Daniel yeah, for Daniel, the divorce. Yeah, she was supposed to lure him <laughs> to the concert that day. We, we solved it, man. We solved it. Parasite Eve. Figured <laughs> out. Oh, yeah, there they go. They sent the helicopter to look for Aya, and now they're on the ship, too. They're like, listen, I know you have no experience flying <laughs> jets or anything, <laughs> um, but we're going to need you to, to fly some of those jets. We think that if you shoot the jet missile, it'll do something different than if the other people shoot the jet missile. Yeah, this is a, a good instance of a, a good an example of like where they could have put it, put like any noise. If you listen closely, silence. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forget, is there another dungeon or is the museum technically the no, last? No, it's, it's the last. Uh, yeah, the museum is like the last dungeon. It's basically you, boss gone. Unless you count end. that running away part. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no. The first time I did a run of this, I died there. No, I, I can't imagine. Thing. Everybody does. Man, yeah. <laughs> well, because the first thing they do in the literal first room you go into, they put a save point that doesn't work. Yeah, that's actually so messed up. Like, that's evil. And that's if stuff, you, you use it, I mean? you die. You can't, like, be like, oops, I'll keep running. Yeah, it's but not like you used it and you die. It's not even like, hurry, go. It's got, like, a ton of menu lag. <laughs> it's like, oh, sorry, can't use this. And you're like, are you even kidding me? <laughs> <laughs> like, the, turn, it, the light is still on and everything, like, it's usable. I'm like, I just used it five seconds ago. Yeah, it's, oh, man. Yeah, I don't know why they did that besides to just, I mean, that seems intentionally mean to me. <laughs> He's like, gosh, uh, gosh forbid you didn't save right before there, you know what I mean? And you had, you know, because you reset the whole day, you know? Oh, that would be terrible. And there's, like, no room for error there. If you yeah. make the wrong turn, <laughs> yeah, you're you just do. dead. <laughs> yeah, that's right, because it's like, yeah. oh, you got to go right or left, and you can't go, you know, both directions because it'll catch you. So, yeah, yeah. you literally have to be correct, just like the hospital roof. Which is kind of a brutal thing to do to casual players, because it pretty much guarantees that oh, the yeah. first time you do it, you're going to lose. <laughs> yeah. And uh, and that's not that's not the vibe. Also, so we're either under the assumption here that Aya knows how to fly this helicopter, or that it's autopiloting, weaving through the city. Yeah, the uh, mitochondria is piloting it. Yeah. Just right, right through her hand, right there. Yeah. <laughs> it's not even the windshield clean and everything. I mean, those wipers are pretty serious. Yeah. Do do helicopters really have windshield wipers? Any, anybody a helicopter they... pilot? <laughs> <laughs> this is something I need to know. So much goop. Yeah, yeah. This game delivers on the goo. If you wanted to play a game, you're like, I need to play a game right now, and it has to have a, sig a substantial amount of goo in it. Oh, it's it's back to the beginning. Oh, it's the like it's tears again. Oh, man. What do you know? My freedom. Yeah, I tell you no. what, the French are not going to be happy about it. I that. know, they were really hard on that. <laughs> yeah, that's, we, that's, that's our bad guys. I didn't do it, the, Lorraine did it. Yeah. <laughs> Lorraine! I don't know why that scene, but there, you ever have seen those like in the 90s, they were like those balls that were like squishy and they had like holes in them. And when you threw them, they like whistled. Yeah. yeah. And they were like mm -hmm. squishy. And were, that's what that scene reminds me of when she's like coming out of it. Yeah. Like, the, the holes in it, you know? I don't know why. It's just something that's stuck in my brain. You get a random save point. They're like, you just watched 11 minutes of cutscene. Do you want to yeah, save? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and what's what's worse is it's none of it auto scrolls, so you have to physically be here, text uh, like hitting the mm -hmm. advanced text button. You know what? This helicopter's probably okay. Yeah, <laughs> into the, into the Hudson with you. <laughs> I like to think the helicopter's still up there today. Yeah. 
watching over us. They're just waiting for somebody to go pick it, get it. <laughs> <laughs> just sitting up there. Thank you, Apache helicopter. Wait. We've just been waiting for it to run out of gas for years. <laughs> Uh, it would have been really funny if they just like had a Easter egg in Parasite Eve 2 where it was just floating above the or desert. You, or you just, like, in, in this scene here, you just see this helicopter <laughs> like, in the background <laughs> just crashing down. This... <laughs> but no, we'll never know what happened to that helicopter. Here we go. Here, here's Eve again. She's significant. She shed the baby weight, but she's also gained a lot more hands. She, so. Yeah, she has uh, some of the craziest anime hair I've ever seen. This is true Square Enix right here. They're like, <laughs> just get a bunch of shapes and just smash <laughs> them together. <laughs> Final boss. Coincidentally, she, she has a lot of hands, but none of them are her actual yeah, hands. Like, she has like Venus flytrap Tell fingers. me that's not just like naked Necron right there. <laughs> yeah, you know I what know. I mean? Like a Final <laughs> Fantasy IX. Just like, just put a bunch of shapes together. We don't, it doesn't matter. <laughs> it's it's not peak Nomura design though. Yeah. She doesn't have any belts on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Could you imagine just one actual belt? <laughs> she just got nine Lulu belts right here. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I like her little corkscrew bottom as well. I don't know what that's about. <laughs> you want to know what? There's there's more hands at the end of that too. Yeah, it's it's. Crazy. She's really good really at getting jars out. unscrewed. Yeah, I was about to say she could probably do mad laundry. <laughs> you know. So here's our action menu that we're going to do. I'm probably going to get grabbed here. Yeah, that's unfortunate. <laughs> the, the I should have just I should have just waited a phase, but that's okay. So, uh, yes, yeah, RJ is making uh, good use of that enter to command thing. So instead of just being able to haste with the turn, he can haste and still do damage. Oh, okay. I saw the defense down and thought it was my haste still. So I didn't haste on. I didn't haste optimally. The run's over. Yeah. Everything was going so well up to this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The haste. Will you knock it off? Oh, nice. Oh, no. Okay, whatever. Bush. Yeah, every time you hear a grunt, stuff is dying. But here, this is like the true demonstration of why this pistol is so good. It just demolishes this phase of this wipe. Yeah, it hits everything. Yeah, if you didn't, for you know, if you were doing this without a gun that had multiple targeting like that, whether it be through random or burst or whatever, uh, you have to kill each one of these pieces individually. So here we go. This this fight has two phases. We have first phase and then squid arm phase. Yeah, I don't know. What, I don't know what's uh, going on here anymore. She like came out of the the chrysalis a little bit and is somehow wearing less clothing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I don't, <laughs> I just have that Squidward, oh no, she's hot me in my head. <laughs> <laughs> and this, uh, th she moves quickly. Here. Oh, that's such a bad thing to happen. All right, hopefully hopefully we hit enough. Okay. Oh, nice. Her 171 crits, not bad. Yeah, because I couldn't. She did her, her um, stiffness move that she applies in this one makes it to I can't move, period. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're so, not just slowed. You're stuck. But here we go. This is the whole why our EXP mattered grinding up to this point. When you hit level 33, you unlock Liberation, which is just super cool looking, but it also just yeah, right. shells out Correct. damage. Is she not? Okay, I was like, you are dead. Do not lie to me. Nice. I always be sitting here waiting to split, and I'm like, hurry up. I you know. know. It's like the <laughs> longest section from like when she dies to like when the screen bl blacks out. I'm like, why does it take so long? Because yeah, usually if you're here at this point, you're like, this run has a chance. Yeah, exactly. I need to know. Her glass broke. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Her glass hair. I do love this scene, though. A little smirky milk. Mm -hmm. In, into the goo. Yeah, she, she becomes goes. Lorraine. Lorraine is all powerful <laughs> she now. She becomes one with the goo. <laughs> RJ smirk it. RJ smirk it. Yeah, you, uh, you actually, in the uh, true ending, if you do the Chrysler building, you have to fight Lorraine. <laughs> day six. All right, here we go. Last day of the run. Yeah, last day of the week, as most people know. <laughs> Liberation. Liberation. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, true. From work, usually, yeah. Yeah. This is a good song. You only hear it now. The game kind of debates you with this song into thinking you're done. Yeah. Yeah, I know. You do get um, put into, like, this kind of false sense of security here where everybody's chatting. All right. And then, I have to play. 
And then the only thing that really kind of, I was like, no, guys, I got a bad feeling. They're like, it's done. He's dead. <laughs> and she's like, no, guys, seriously. We have no barometer on this. Yeah, yeah. They're like, what are you talking about? She melted into goo. <laughs> But here's the point where uh, if you were considering going to New Game Plus runs, you would want to rename your gun and stuff. We're going to try and not go into the menu at all. Yeah, right. That's so hard. <laughs> <laughs> I am so bad at it, man. I always open the stupid menu. Yeah, Aye. everybody! <laughs> well done, well done. All the build-up was to that. Yeah. I will never be better at this run. Yep. We're going to go grab some supplies here. We're going to make sure we finish strong. Yeah. Take the threes as well. In the well. marathon, this guy is a, a real, real Chad. He just sits there and he's like, you want guns, ammo? <laughs> no. you, don't want, you, want, you want some medicine? Forget it, man. The deepest cargo pant yeah, pockets yeah. you've ever seen. I got the best stuff of everything. You're like, all right, cool, man. <laughs> Thanks so much. Sick. Yeah, I, I, the game is over. Why are you still giving me all this stuff? <laughs> And then you go out and you realize, oh, I've been bamboozled. <laughs> and then they kill you at the end. <laughs> so we should be pre plenty good on medicine. Fingers crossed. Because <laughs> we did get, I guess I, I did get a little blasted by first Four, phase. You got two extra fours and three extra threes. I think yeah. they give you a four threes. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, you should be Gucci. Although the difference between a three and a four is significant. It's like yeah. 180 to yeah. 400. <laughs> it is a big difference. It's like, yeah, it's basically a halfy. By the time you get to the threes, you're feeling it. Like, <laughs> you're like, oh. Yeah, you're getting rocked if you get blasted yeah. past all the fours. <laughs> but here we go. I had a bad feeling. If you if you want to indulge, post baby rage in chat. <laughs> 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 yeah, it just cries and everything explodes. Yeah. Typical of a baby. Yeah. True. Yeah, that's a pretty good actual, um, that's, a, that's a pretty good representation of parenthood right now. <laughs> <laughs> Trust me, I have, I have a kid. It's, it's like that. They first come out and you're like, amazing. And then everything quickly starts crumbling around <laughs> you. <laughs> The, um, yeah, so the, the ultimate being, all jokes aside, is, uh, is much more scary than my child, that's for sure. <laughs> uh, but he, uh, he, he, she, you know, I don't know, uh, shows up and is right away ready to throw down. Like, yeah, he, this he, baby he, is no, ready to fight. Yeah, no words really shared or anything. He literally swims up, throws himself over the side. And he's like, let's get cracking. Hits like, you with the, yeah. qui with the quick goo goo ga ga <laughs> yeah, and then yeah, he floats yeah. up. <laughs> And it's like, I think I'm going to have to shoot that baby. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, basically what happens, yeah. Uh, I, hate the, I hate the baby noise. It's like too realistic. Yeah, it is gross. Yeah. And that face right there, it's like almost like it's cheeky, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like it's grinning at me. It's making so many wet noises. I yeah. know. Well, like, <laughs> look at it. It's just slobbering across <laughs> the ground, a little slug. It's so nasty. And then talk about like the fastest aging process I've ever seen in my life. This Ooh. is actually Lorraine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she was really on her way to get Daniel, but we're just in the way. I <laughs> love <laughs> <laughs> the sound. It's just bleh, bleh every time you shoot it. Yeah. Hey, get back here. Yeah, he's just taking off on you, man. That was a that was actually an odd fight. Like, that was yeah, pretty weird. He didn't uh, he didn't do the drop top uh, where he he sometimes just hit the ground and he, if you stand on top of him, sometimes it just doesn't hit you, and it's really cool. Now this yeah. phase is probably the mm, this I don't is, know the third phase I is pretty this scary one. too, but I this one's this, this one. one's pretty bad. There's two pieces. Oh yeah, it's doing this stupid move. I feel like the third one, you have a little bit more room for like maneuverability. Are you gonna come down? I was like, you are falling. Stop joking. We're just gonna go for it. All right, so we're gonna try our liberating. Hey, <laughs> falls on the ground, smacks me for 174. Yeah, that's All right, good. so we really want this liberation to hit this form over and over again. Was it four? Four times I think should be good. 
That's not four. Go back. Okay, so that's two on the wings. Three on the wings. All right, you got to go back. Okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. All body. Let's Stay go, Stay here, baby. baby. Uh, let's, let's go! go. <laughs> <laughs> Scared me there a little bit. He was, I know. He was about to go all wings. <laughs> Definitely with the uh, new damage number we're pumping out here before yeah, Liberates will go. Yeah, like what, 170 something? Yeah, right? it's, it's wild. Yeah, it's strong. But here we go, we got buff Frieza. <laughs> <laughs> here I am. Yeah, he looks scarier, but I feel like his moves are a little bit more telegraphed, but um, yeah, he's, he's quick. There's a lot more movement in this fight. The last fight you didn't really get to see as much because RJ, you know, quickly dealt with it. But when they disconnect, they start like running across the map, and it's really annoying to have to dodge both of them. It becomes kind of problematic. So what you're seeing RJ do here is he's going to, as quickly as he can, once he jumps to a corner, he's going to run to stand directly underneath the feet of the ultimate being three. Um, and if you use a little shadow on the ground and you just kind of stand in the middle of it, it's usually a pretty good indication. So right there, uh, what RJ was saying is that when he he was in the middle of his shooting animation, oh, what a jerk! And uh, and when he jumped, so it was a little risky to do that, but he still made it fine. And same thing right there, nice. These are good passes. Oh, okay, he came in for the other one. <laughs> All right, we're gonna go for it. We might uh, the damage will be close because we didn't hit a lot of crits, but I, I shot him a couple more times than you normally need to. I think you got him. I think we'll be good. There's no multiple targets here, so thankfully it's <laughs> there's no yeah. uh, no guessing. We're punching his toes. Oh, you're at a nice HP right now. Oh. Or, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's gonna carry us to victory here. <laughs> yeah. There oh, I nice. go. All right. Basically, after that phase, we're in the clear as far as fighting this guy. You have two revives to make. Two revives yeah, and yeah. I know all of the med threes and possibly med fours. I just didn't even bother checking. Oh, are you doing the old the uh, Japanese gun strat? Oh, yeah, we got it. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. So we picked up a random submachine gun in the museum and never spoke about it until this very moment. Yeah, the strategy was actually brought to us by um, a Japanese speedrunner. And he said, hey, try this. And we were all like, huh? Oh. <laughs> Or I don't even know if he's a runner. I think he was just playing the game once. Oh, Man, almost. I think you were one one crit away. It was definitely close. Those things went away early in the phase. But yeah, yeah. You basically need to do what, like twenty damage to Something it. Something like that. Yeah. So with a, enough crits and that bullet shoots, that gun shoots like ten bullets or something. Yeah, it's a ton of ammo. And because uh, that fight, you can only do one or two, right? So like, it doesn't matter how strong your gun is. So in that case, um, you know, the Japanese guy that suggested that to us, he thought, okay, well. Just find a gun that can un unload, you know, 20 bullets or potentially 10, and some of them hit for two. Uh, so there are some times when that cycle just ends in a single turn. This form of the boss always reminded me of Chaos from Sonic Adventure. <laughs> <laughs> Here's Daniel's anime moment. On fire. Perfect bullet. Although we'll go back to the fact that my aide has been trying to give us this clip of ammo for yeah, like. To be fair. <laughs> so I mean, if we just had it, maybe we would have just you know ended on baby phase. And, and in fact, the military was like, they kept telling him, "Shut up, <laughs> quit talking." And he was like, "Guys, seriously, I have to." And they're like, "Be quiet." <laughs> Guys, I science. Yeah. I was in the lab again. So he basically uh, just put <laughs> your your blood and DNA inside of these bullets. You see how many bullets I have? Yeah. <laughs> we probably should have checked that. <laughs> but we're good. Yeah, no, I was, I was watching your bullet count. When you, were, when you were in the museum, when you got the 45 right before you went out, I was like, okay, good, you're fine. Yeah, no, I was, yeah, I think you had like 20 left. I know, and I went out of my way to get a lot of extra ammo. You so could have you... gotten the, the ammo from the guy in the bow, but I didn't think it was that bad. I think it was yeah, bad. it would have been, usually if you're with... Over 100 or something, you're like... Yeah, and the only reason we're that super low is because we used the 10 fire gun. We would have never ran out with oh, the pistol. Oh, yeah, 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 that's true. So here we go, the chase phase. All right, this is super nerve. I'm like getting bad anxiety right now, even though I have nothing to do with it. <laughs> Go in the door. I was just running into the wall. So you hear this music that just progressively gets faster and louder, uh, which doesn't do wonders for your nerves. Um, and then also they put that save spot, which you can, mind you, you can save at that phone before you do the boss fights. But if you come in here now, it's disabled for some reason. 
Um, you know, naturally, that's just, oh, bad time for the phones to go down. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so if you accidentally <laughs> try to click on it, um, you'll, you'll die because the ultimate being will catch up to you. So it's pretty dirty of them to do that. And then you have to do the entire boss fight oh, yeah. over if again. If you saved, yeah, you got to do the whole day. Uh, and if you didn't save, mm, <laughs> you might be doing, you might be back in the museum. <laughs> Oh man, RJ is, is killing it right here. And there's no clear indication of which way to go either. So like... Yeah, you could be, if you're really unlucky, you could be doing this section a bunch. Oh yeah, yeah, that's true. I didn't even really thought about it. Yeah, you could die four or five times before you get it correct. Yeah, and that... So here we go. Also, this part right here is not explicitly told to you. You need to start the boilers or whatever. Get away from me. Oh, yeah, you know, one time when I first learned the route, I was like, why did these speedrunners turn this thing on? Like, so dumb. <laughs> and, then, and then the one time I'm like, time save. I just skipped it. I was like, oh, man. <laughs> I was like, it turns out they might know what they're doing. It was the first game I ever did a run of, so I was a little... Uh, <laughs> Naive. Yeah, yeah, ignorant <laughs> to the fact that uh, somebody had probably already figured it out. All right, so we have two more screens left before time's coming up. And another thing um, is like, you know, you see these to go up these stairs, you have to hold down, which might make sense, you know, but like sometimes the time's can... coming up right now. We've done it. There it is, baby. Great job. Dude, to, to come in at that time with the cards you got dealt is incredible. <laughs> that was uh, not a <sighs> deal. I mean, it, it was actually like, if you would have asked like speedrunners the ideal EXP route, RJ did a the actual opposite of it. <laughs> <laughs> so he got like all the fights in the beginning and then like scattered ones at the end. Yeah. yeah. Well, you know, we ended up getting there in the end and then I thought it was gonna be way worse DBH, no, no, but. <laughs> no, he, did, he did a great job. No deaths, two revives. Man, yeah, I mean, that, that's a clean run. True. That's a clean true. run. He could have picked up no revives and made it. All right. That would have been scary. But. Oh, yeah, no, I would never do that. But, you know, let's do some shout outs here. Uh, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me. Palmer, Bomb Bomb, Amart made the run very enjoyable. Uh, RPG Limit Break for bringing uh, Parasite Eve back to show it off. It's been, it's been a while, so there's actually been quite a bit of transformation to the route, so it's cool to show it off. Um,. The Parasite Eve community, of course, I mod for the game, and, you know, they're a great group of people that are very passionate about this game and the speedrun. It's a very easy run to learn. Probably has some of the best notes for beginners that I can even think of for a run, so if you're interested, come stop by. Um, guys, do you have any sign-offs? I'm ready for bed. Yeah. <laughs> Me yeah. too. Yeah. <laughs> But uh, yeah, I just want to say thanks to uh, letting me join you, RJ. You did a fantastic, phenomenal yeah, job. Yeah, thank, you, so, thank yeah. you. One more time for RJ, guys. That is a, uh, he made it look easier than, I swear he made it look easier than it is. Uh, some of those fights are not simple. Yeah, and uh, keep, it, keep it going for Palmer because he actually does have the next run and it is yeah, twice as long as this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but anyway, I think that's it for me, guys. Thank you so much. All right, thank you again so much for that amazing run. And with that, that ends my hosting shift here at RPG Limit Break. Again, my name is Amberly, and I will be handing this over to the wonderful RP Priya after we take a quick ad break and then an interview with Tim and Palmer. Thank you all again. Have a great night and great whatever time zone you're in.
Welcome back to RPG Limit Break. This is RP Priya. Uh, I will be your host for the next run coming up, Blue Dragon. And do I just? While we're getting set up for the game, I'd like to read a donation from the last run. Um, before, this, this donation is from Phantasms, and they donate $10. Before I get started, just wanted to mention regarding that beginning cutscene, what's another three minutes to add to the total? Maybe just for fun, why not add the total of all the Parasite Eve runners as well? This isn't a meme, I swear. Anyways, hello everyone. Really excited for RPG Limit Break to be back this year. I can't never get enough of this event. I'm actually taking leave off work this week myself because I have been struggling with my mental health and doing everything I can to keep it in check. Once again, this will unfortunately be my only donation for the year, but just wanted to give another shout out to my best friend and brother in arms, Archer. He's been really pushing himself at work this week and going through his own motions as well. I can't give him enough credit as to how much he's been there for me considering how tough it's been to get through some of the ongoing issues since 2022. I appreciate you, my dude. Archer has helped me push through a lot of barriers, whether it's pushing me to my limit in Halo, helping me get past the necessary drama, or just being there to keep my mind off the issues I'm going through. Love you, Archer, but take a dang break once in a while. That's it for me, RPG Limit Break. Good luck this week. I'll be cheering you on from Canada. And remember, RPG Limit Break is back. Let's go! Thank you so much for that donation, Phantasms.
We are here raising money for NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, and it's the nation's largest grassroots mental health organization. NAMI provides advocacy, education, support, and public awareness to help improve the lives of all the individuals and families affected by mental illness. NAMI exists to ensure that no one is alone on their mental health journey.